Antichrist! It is Sunday, July 30th, 2017. I am your host, the King of Villains, Bulldog Malenko, and this is the Bulldog Unchained Podcast. Joining me today, I've got Quan Lynch returning. What's going on, man? Oh, man, nothing. Chill. I've also got my ever-so-lovable roommate, Danielle Hoffman. How you doing? I'm good. Hi, buddy. How are you? Awesome, awesome. And making a return, finally, after a long <laughs> absence... I got Mr. Stephen Avenues. What's going on, man? Hey, what's up? So, today we're going to be discussing some real hot button issues, uh, mostly dealing with the whole transgender conversation that's going on and people are losing their minds over. Um, and then possibly roll into mental health issues and like depression, things like that. But uh, just to give everybody a heads up, in case you missed it, so not only is the Bulldog Unchained podcast available on Podbean, but now, and it's you can also search for it on iTunes, there's the YouTube channel, you just go to YouTube, search for Bulldog Unchained, and we're on Stitcher now. So I've got four platforms, so literally there is no excuse anymore for people not being able to figure out how to click a button and play a show. I mean, I understand... That's there's there's my biggest strife with mental illness. <laughs> people who can't click the play button. Oh fuck. You know you gotta make a commitment to the whole show. You just <laughs> right. get started and be hey, like I'm out. Right. I don't even care if you listen to the whole show. Load the motherfucker up and click play and then <laughs> bail out after ten seconds. I don't give a fuck. Drive I mean. my numbers up, right? <laughs> Drive my numbers up. I listen up. to him talk all day, every day. I try to listen all to numbers every matter, record. I believe. Yeah, yeah, fuck all, yeah they all do all because matter. Because right now, I'm averaging per episode 700 <laughs> downloads per episode oh, across nice. all pla- like all platforms. Yeah. And that's awesome. But once I get into that 1,000 to 1,500 range, then I can start seeking out advertising and sponsors. And then from there, try to boost it, boost it, boost it, and hit that 5,000 mark. And then we're looking at some good money. And then hopefully one day Bulldog can quit his job and just do this shit every day. <laughs> right. Woohoo! Nice. But anyway, so yeah. <clears throat> with the whole transgender thing, I, I did put the call out on Facebook of when we talk about this, you got to come to this with a completely open mind and be able to talk both sides of it there will not be any pure liberal or pure conservative sentiments in this and i'm i'm definitely going to be throwing in a lot of stuff on this that i've researched danielle i know you've been researching it and Quan and steven i know you've both got some (laughs) <laughs> got some uh, feelings about the this issue. Yeah. yeah, I didn't want to be the dummy that didn't have anything to bring to the table on this one, so I was like, let me pull up some. Well, I mean, you actually, facts. we what we tried to do, but we just couldn't, we couldn't get, get it, it synced together. up. Yeah, we couldn't get it together. Quan and Steven, you guys were not even going to be a part of this because originally we literally were going to have a trans female to male and a trans male to female on the show (laughs) because i have a friend who is trans male to female and Mm -hmm. she has a friend to fuck your world up up anymore you have a cisgender male cisgender female straight the female to male is now considered straight so you throw sexuality in that because he's attracted to women the female to male is now male to female uh, male to female is now considered a lesbian because she is woman. now yeah, yeah. It was, literally your, your audience probably would have been like <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I, 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 that just, shit blows like, my mind when I, when I try to think of it like yeah I, whatever I'm just like, yeah whatever. it's just like that would have been a mind-boggling show like <laughs> if anybody has any questions we pretty much have the spectrum covered <laughs> just please ask away we can get you an answer yeah so 
let's uh let's start with the whole thing that really sparked this new conversation What's i'm gonna up? have a start like my personal opinion on this was going into trump stuff I don't, if you're transgender i don't care what you do i don't care what job you have i don't care what job you hold it doesn't affect me in any kind of way just putting that out there because that's not going to be some of the points i'm arguing if anybody else wants to come off of their normal stance what what they generally think? No, I totally agree with you. I yeah, don't yeah, care what anybody does. Yeah, and see that's that's it's your just life. It. Do whatever you want to. Right. I think the four of us can agree. We don't care if someone is trans or not. Here's the problem that I have with the liberal aspect of the trans community or the supporters of the trans community. This whole acting like biology doesn't exist and scientific fact is relegated to opinion and that there are more than two sexes is absolute horseshit when you are born you are born either a male or a female and only in rare 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 circumstances have there ever been hermaphrodites born in the human race right right yeah so people come up with this whole term of non-binary when it absolutely is binary there are two there's male female it's not male female centaur ma- ma- you know minotaur <laughs> unicorn fucking <laughs> although that would be quite kind of awesome though it would be kind of like weird to see a fucking unicorn and... well i mean then we'd be getting into trans species yeah but, i think I mean, like we? a unicorn in walmart would be fucking I mean, you amazing. Be, apparently you can be transracial too so i mean that's oh okay. yeah, god yeah rachel does <laughs> let, out. let me just ask <laughs> i'm gonna ask Quan because Quan, you're a black man i'm gonna ask you your feelings on that chick <laughs> said she identified as a black woman and There's then two has of them. one took it even farther than that. No, she, yeah, I thought the German lady, yeah, yeah. I, the German lady's fucking something's wrong <laughs> she, with that bitch. Like, she got fucking Rachel that's was you. like, I'm gonna see what I can do to pass. This lady was like, this I'll lady's see like, your I'm pass passing like, and raise you. Hold my dear. I was like, yeah, talk. I was like, you gonna throw away all this good white privilege for, for nothing? <laughs> like, you get well, nothing out of it. That's where, like, honestly, that's where mental illness ties into things like this. That's how can you look at that and not immediately go, this person is extremely fucked up? Yeah, I mean, because she's like, I guess she's, she's like playing into the society's standard saying like, this is what a black woman should look like. She got her ass done and her titties done and she got her lips done and she got her skin dark and I'm like, you look like a fucking cheap Barbie. Like anti-Michael Jackson. She, if anything, she, if anything <laughs> she looked like a Puerto Rican. Yeah, I mean, she looked like shit. Like, she looked like shit with long hair. That's all it was. Like. <laughs> she she, was even your weave yeah, is she fucked like up. A long, like a long piece of shit. That's all. Like, uh, I, I was just like, what's what's the purpose? Like, what are you planning to get like out of this? Like a catcher with hairball attached. Yeah, I was like, I mean, you can't achieve anything because you're never going to be like, oh, well, she's one of us now. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We she's don't want you. I was like, no, we don't want you. And then white people going to look at you like, what the oh, fuck? Oh, we don't want you either. Like, I don't want you shit. Maybe like... You have fuck? made yourself an island. Yeah, like... That's all Maybe Dominicans done. will take her. I don't know. Dominicans <laughs> will take that shit. Um, as being, like, as someone who can tan really dark, speak Spanish, and has a big old booty, she ain't my people. No, she... Yeah, she... <laughs> she would never be invited to the cookout. Ever. Right? Like, she... She can't no. get a boy. Yeah, she can't. Yeah, she can't get a plate at all. She can't even get a kosher plate. So, with the whole transgender <laughs> thing, goddamn kosher plate. Well, it kind of ties to the, just like how the, that German lady went to like the stereotypical aspects. Right. Of it. The transgenders do the same thing that they go for the most stereotypical what they think of you know the archetype of a woman is you know or a man. man. Yeah. yeah. Either way, and they gotta go for it. So I'm like, it. It's a little. But but. These are the same people that want to do away with archetypes and the and yeah, stereotypes, right, right, and I'm yeah. like, but you literally you reinforce it, right? Most also, time, lest we forget that a man was voted Woman of the Year last year. Yeah, was it last year or the year before? It, no, it was the year before. Well, it, it, at years the years same ago. time, a like a woman, Serena Williams, was told that she looks too fucking manly. <laughs> Right. Nope. As a man wins woman of the year. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? That, if that's not the most confusing shit. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where the confusion comes in is because people just put too much fucking stock into this shit. So the whole thing that sparked the, the, the debate this week is because Trump made, uh, made was it an executive order that he 
It's not an executive no, order. It was, just, it was just a recommendation. It was a tweet. That's it was, all. It's literally all, no, all it was. Well, no, he's trying to put this into place. He supposedly talked to generals and advisors, and I know ain't nobody talking to him. Nobody's answering his calls right. at this point in time. Who, no well, phone, Mattis has already did, spoken right. out about Everybody's it. Everybody's like, new phone, who this? Right, right. Call comes to General Mattis already responded to it and basically said it was absolutely absurd. Now, here's, trying, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the, the SEALs, or the Marines, excuse me, have all at this point decided to ignore the order. It doesn't make any oh, sense yeah. to them. Just like every other order that he's put out. Like, now, here's, here's my viewpoint of this. Title Seven, which is talking about the whole uh, an employer cannot discriminate, blah, 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 that does not apply to the military. The military is not an equal opportunity employer. It is not a standard fucking job. It is the military. The military exists for one reason. It functions as a death machine. That is it. They talk about defending your freedoms. No, America hasn't had to defend anything in a long, long time. Now we are an invasion machine. Exactly. You're not defending freedoms when your troops are the majority present in other people's countries. That's not defense. That is invasion. That's that's <laughs> like saying that, you know, when the offense and defense lines up on on the field for football, that the center who's getting ready to snap the ball to the quarterback is defending. No. Yeah. No. no, you're trying to move the ball forward. Right. You're that's like when was the last time you seen a Russian tanker ride down Lincoln? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Never fucking seen that. Obviously. Exactly. Then there would be a call for defense. Yeah, I'm like, okay, I get it now. But here's the thing. Release Woodland Park. In or, yeah. uh, <laughs> we City. do need defense two blocks away, but yeah. ain't nobody doing shit about that. Not even a little bit. <laughs> defend your country. Now you can shoot all the fucking guns you defend want. my neighborhood. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I said, my block is kind of sketchy. I don't know. I, said, yeah, I so, can't go out after a certain time. So. Here's here's my feeling, and and I've seen several. Uh, I've I've got several places that I've seen this brought up by veterans, and this is my stance on the whole transgender in the military. If you are already post op and have gone through all procedures, and you are physically and psychologically capable of performing the duties, cool, good for you. You can serve. However, if you are pre-op and you're taking hormone pills... You have to take those post-op. It doesn't ever stop, though. See, and that's where part of a problem begins to develop. Because if you are on any kind of steady regimen of medications, you can't get in the fucking military. You can't. And also, here's kind of a double-edged sword. Post-op transgender, well, guess what? That means you've had a major surgery in your life. Guess what you can't do? Serve in the fucking military. Majority of diabetics can't serve. (laughs) Right. Right. Dude, if you have not enough or too many digits, you can't serve. If your vision, Quan, you and I, we couldn't. Really? Our vision, I guarantee, is below standard. (laughs) Yes. You can't do it. If you're hearing, I I have only 30% hearing in my left ear. I'm not included in that. Oh, oh, really oh yeah. Yeah. just decorative. <laughs> just decorative. Um, no, it, like I've got thirty percent hearing in my left ear. Can't serve. Or if you have bone spurs. Oh <clears throat> yeah, flat. If you have flat feet, you can't serve in the military. So let me hop in on this because, like I said, I did some research on this. Eighteen countries, including some of the above, Israel, the UK, Canada, Australia, and varying other countries, allow transgender pre and post op and Periop, if that's what you want to phrase it as, into their army. Look, just looking at Israel, like their their army is not a joke. Every, what is it? Everybody serves at the age of eighteen, man. Well, woman, it's like Russia, man, yeah. woman, and I everything mean, you, in between. You go, and they will take care of their any like whatever they're doing. The army will 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 handle those expenses while they're in the unit. So you're talking about being not being able to be a death machine and and all this other stuff. I don't know about you, but I've seen, you know... I mean, not the Canadians. We all know that they ride their moose into war. Hold on. I, I've got the counterpoint for you, though. Because that's what I was getting into, was... Other military... You look at Israel. They train in Krav Maga. That is what all Israeli soldiers are trained in. 
Krav Maga is one of the most brutal forms of martial art. It shouldn't even be considered a martial art. It is literally just how to fucking kill people in five seconds. With everyday items. With your hands. Literally, you're just... It, it, it is the most destructive form of fighting I've ever seen. Like, I'm pretty sure if you actually got got a master of Krav Maga who's a decent wrestler and put him in the octagon in the UFC, someone's going to die on a pay-per-view. You're literally going to see it happen in front of you. Someone's going to die. That being said, Israel, do you think Israeli troops have to take sensitivity classes? I'm betting not. No. They be don't. Interested. Other countries, the Canada might fuck around with that a little bit. <laughs> when they're moose. But, <laughs> but Russia, Israel, all of these other foreign militaries, they don't fuck around with holding your hand and making sure that your feelings are accounted for and all this bullshit. Uh uh-uh, uh. That's not fucking flying. You either go out and kill or. Your ass is probably going to sit in a brig for 20 fucking years if you're lucky. Yeah. If you're lucky enough to be let out. But here, a lot of people are talking about the distraction aspect for the for the U.S. military. And I do honestly feel that it is a major distraction. I understand transgender want equal treatment. That doesn't mean you get special or preferential treatment. There I should mean, not... Let- Let's look at what a distraction is being called with this administration. You can't show up in the White House anymore with a nice dress on that don't have sleeves because apparently women's arms are distracting at this <laughs> shoulders. point. Shoulders. The shoulders. shoulders. So are the shoulders, shoulders give me a shoulders, raging hard I mean, on. But, <laughs> but a lot of that was perpetrated by the clavicle. left. The media of the yeah. left. They're the ones crying about... They cried about Melania, how she was dressed, saying it was unpresidential. Meanwhile, and, she's the sexiest <laughs> fucking first lady we've ever I mean, had. Like, she's Jackie the Kennedy wasn't bad looking. She only, wasn't bad she's looking. She's the only first but... lady that you could Google her nudes right easily. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. You ain't even got to look far. Yeah, like you, all you got to do is <laughs> best put timeline nudes and boom. <laughs> I'm betting you could still have safe search on on Google, and they're still gonna <laughs> yeah, pop I mean, up in the image yeah. search. <laughs> they are that readily available. So I've the never thing is, that Barbara Bush's nudes I've have never. This doesn't pop up. This argument wasn't being made two years ago. You know, Obama was in office for eight years. Did it in his last half of the year remaining of uh, his presidency. And then, so it's been in effect for probably less than six months, you know, that transgenders could serve openly. And they said, oh, no, let's get rid of it. And everyone's having a heart attack about it. Like, I'm just like, what? where was this two years ago? No one was fighting for this two years ago. No one was caring about this two years ago. It's only because it's a talking point for the left and the mainstream media. Everything's a talking point. Yeah, you know, Trump can't do anything right. You know, if he said, "Oh, I want to allow everybody in, and you can you can wear bicycle helmets and go to war and everything else," <laughs> oh, be, do you not care about our troops? You know, they they have a heart attack about it. So either way, it's it's yeah. whatever. Well, damned if you do, damned if you don't. You're yeah. going to be manipulated by the media with when no matter which side you take on this. Right. And it doesn't make a fake news because people have been getting manipulated by the media since there were, was media. But uh, not now we're just talking about it. Well, I mean, correction, since the media became corporately owned. I mean, True. Since, yeah. we're, since the first, um, uh, what's it called? Telegraph. Telegraph, there's been news traveling from one side of the world to the other, and it's all been propaganda based on where you're at. So, I mean, I mean that's true. There's always someone in there's always been someone in control of the mass distribution. Yeah. I mean, like, for example, I mean, don't want to put the race, but like, say, like, with black people, we have Juneteenth. Like, is June 19th is when all the slaves found out they were free. It was 1869. But like, mm-hmm. Emancipation Proclamation was way before that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we didn't find out until no, like, let y'all know. way. <laughs> yeah. It was like, oh, yeah, by the way. The other important uh, aspect. I <laughs> The other important aspect to remember. (laughs) The other important aspect to remember is dead people don't write history. No. Yeah. Exactly. That's true. That's Um, why history is told by the people that ran. mm Mm-hmm. But with the whole, uh, the whole, they have they have sensitivity classes in the military now for dealing with LGBT. This is my problem with that. You are creating killers. Mm -hmm. You have sent them to basic like to drill instruction or you've sent them to boot camp to create killers that is the sole purpose even even if you're a fucking tank mechanic 
your ass had better be able to pick up a rifle and shoot. Mm -hmm. Like, there are very few people that are allowed to conscientiously object to carrying a firearm or engaging in war. Most of them are medics. Even so, I know some medics that served in the military that would pick up a rifle and shoot in a heartbeat. Yeah. But you're creating killers. But now these guys have to have four to six hours, sometimes multiple times, of sensitivity classes. So you're undoing the killer mind state. Like, it's just, oh, well, we have to be mindful. No, no, you don't. You are the goddamn military. It is a, it literally, it's a death machine. That's what you're let made me, for. Let me cut in here, because on the sensitivity training, I, I, I'm, that doesn't really work, in my opinion. However, you're getting four to six hours on this, four to six hours on that. We have women in the military that are being assaulted, sexually assaulted, at an astronomical rate, and it's not getting reported. So do these men, these killers, need some kind of training maybe not sensitivity training but consent training that is for fucking real we this is ridiculous now whether you think hang on now whether your argument is should women be in the military or not is are they a distraction in the military should they be on the front lines at the same time you have these it, it is what it is now that debate is over with that it, it's we're already there however do i believe that there should be some kind of training that says maybe just don't be a dick in general to people around you. That seems like if you can't do that on your own, maybe you should get some help. Here's the thing. What is the number one trait that someone would have to possess to join the military? Have to possess. Well, the ability to kill. Yeah. Which would make Killing you what? A killer. <laughs> <laughs> or a mercenary. Assassin. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much you have to be sociopathic. Would you agree that rape is... A very sociopathic trait. Yeah, because it's so many people. But it's not so many, limited to right. Yeah, it's so many women like willing to just give you pussy. Like, why would you need to take it? Right. But, Might not be the cutest chick, but I mean, but she'd still get it. And and, I mean, and the thing, like the thing with the whole. She may rape, not originally been a chick either, but this is true too. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with the whole rape in the military. Yeah, the fact that so many go unreported is insane, and even the ones that are reported aren't really handled. Well, it's the same and all this out was here. all this was happening before women got into the military. You had guys sexually abusing and and doing these type of things to other guys, other guys. just cuz it's hazing. It's hazing, you know, in that sense. It's not like a, some kind of maybe some of it was some kind of this, this control kind of sexual aspect, thing. But yeah, this like kind of brings us yeah. around. So, there's been this buzz article that went around after this thing about the army or the US military spends five times the amount that they would spend for a transgender treatment on Viagra. So I went and looked into this because I was like, this fact is too convenient to just be a, a blanket statement. Sometimes you, if you hear something that really meets with your argument, you need to go look at that because the fact is too convenient. Go look and break it down. So the fact, the number 5% is in fact correct. However, it's actually 3% for active military. I mean, somebody explain to me why an active military person, a person who is currently, you know, overseas or wherever serving on a mission needs Viagra. Well, and, they, and in actuality, um, I'm pretty. I don't know if they still do it, but I know that they used to in in boot camp and and de, and and drill and all that. They used to actually put saltpeter yeah. in in the men's diet so that they wouldn't get sexual urges. Yeah, but now three percent higher than what it would cost for us to make sure every transgender person who is currently in the military got their hormones treated. Um, or whatever treatment they desire. It's three times that amount is what we're currently paying for Viagra in the active military. The other 2% is going to, you know, people who are at home, whatever. Um, so, like that, why don't we just cut down on the vi amount of Viagra we're giving people? Well, sure, I agree. Hold like, on. meet me in the middle here. here like, here's, no, fuck the middle. Here's my, here's my problem. Night. Here's my problem with both of those. Fuck your hormone treatments and fuck your Viagra. We have disabled veterans. Yeah, yeah. That can't Word. get the fucking treatment they need. I'm sorry, like I've said, I've said this before on my show. When it comes to the military, I don't do the hero worship bullshit. I, you signed up for this. You you knew what you were getting into. The, the, it's not a fucking surprise if you get your legs or arms blown off. I mean, I'm sure it's a surprise to you, but it's not a surprise to the general population. You're you're a soldier. You're a marine. Whatever. But the thing is, I also stand by. If you break it, you bought it. Yeah. And so that falls on the military and the government. Of Absolutely. If someone survives and they come home fucked up, 
you broke it, you bought it. Yeah. You fucking take care of them until they die. I, I and and I don't mean menial fucking marginal care either. Yeah. Dude, the VA is a joke. Oh, like the VA is an absolute People died joke. in the lobby of the VA of, having a heart attack yeah. trying to get seen by the VA. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of it, as far as the arguments about the money issue, like, I, yeah, there's a lot of dumb spending happening in, in government. That's what government does. It spends money dumb. Uh, but I think the the real argument, I think, for uh, in support of, uh, I would say, filtering out uh, transgenders, especially those that have, uh, the argument is, is transgenderism a mental illness? So let's just put that aside and say, no, it's not. Let's just say just your it's, general transgender is not uh, a mental illness. It does however, not actually qualify under body dysmorphic disorder, which is what they try to classify it under. Right. Yeah. That's so, however, what I was researching, However, too. the DSM-5 states yes. that 90% of transgenders do suffer from some sort of other mental illness, including then gender dysphoria. So we have to. So nine. You're taking a group of people that ninety percent of them have some sort of mental have illness. Have a form of mental yes. illness. Transgenderism yeah. is not. And a suicide rate of forty percent. Right. So you take you take yes. the average Joe that's in the military, and comes back with PTSD, has already, suicidal rates already. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah skyrocketing. Yeah. From the rates. zero like a point zero two percent. Now he's up in the forties, fifties. So you're gonna take somebody that already is pre, you know predisposition to a 40% suicide rate and you're throw them in the it. military and and yeah you're, yeah you're going to double it i mean it, it's it's what's going to happen so the thing is is the liberals always have made the argument let's prevent weapons in the hands of the mentally ill and i totally agree with that i don't think the mentally ill should have uh weapons i don't think they should be able to go out and buy handgun and all these things there should be a psychological background uh check and evaluation yeah. evaluation yeah for buying those type of weapons uh, you know, shotguns, maybe not so, but I mean, some kind of personal home defense weapon, sure. I, you know, if someone has some sort of mental ill, but they have no history of crime That's, or anything else. That would be me. Like, I'm bipolar. I don't have, I don't currently have a gun or own a gun. Mm-hmm. There is guns in this apartment that I could probably hit somebody with a butt of. I mean, I think I've, I've fired a gun all of one time. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never had a history of violence. I've never been, I've never just walked out and assaulted somebody yeah. with my fist or anything else. Um, I do. I am interested in what it would take for me to be a gun owner, and if that would be something. But I'm willing. Well, it should I'd be, be willing, state, anything stated in your way currently right now. Yeah, so, I would be willing to be like, eh, that's just not for me, and take the hit, and that I can't own a gun. If somebody out there who is mentally ill and dangerous at the same time mm-hmm. to not own a gun, I'd be like, well, you know, I didn't have one before. But, I don't need one now. Yeah. But people but, consider dangerous. They're thinking of dangerous to other people, and not dangerous to themselves. And right. that's the big thing is with, with the military. Not only because they spend a lot of money on you, so they don't want you blowing your head off, but then also blowing other people's heads off too. Um, so, so to me, th- this argument of saying, "Well, we're going to take a group of people that ninety percent of them suffer from some sort of mental illness and has a suicide rate of forty percent." And we want them to go into this machine that then the liberals are crying about because it's making people commit suicide and doing all these bad right. things that they don't like. I mean, but it is so. Uh, so on that, not only are they crying about yeah. what what happens to military people, but they're crying that not enough people are allowed into this yeah. death suicide machine. <laughs> yeah, that they're against. <laughs> but these people uh, they come back like you know with PTSD and shit. Mm-hmm. Now, but they're now they're trained. Killers, killers now yes. yeah. with mental issues. They yeah. might not have had these issues going into it. It's mm-hmm. possible. But now these people are coming back. Yeah. Do you know do you know how the one percenter biker gang started? It was from um it was army like well not army um it was like vets, right? World War Two. Yeah, so yep. was, yeah. Uh, the very first outlaw group was called the Pissed Off Bastards. Yeah, pissed, yeah, pissed off bastards. And yeah. that's where the Hells Angels spawned from. It was a bunch of dudes that came back from World War Two. They had all this money. Most of them were not married because, I mean, it was World War Two, man. You yeah. went. You were 18. You were actually 16, 16 and 17. 16, 17. You went. <laughs> they, they you got home. You got money. Like, if you made it home, you had money. And these dudes missed that camaraderie because, let's face facts, World War Two was way different than anything. Yeah, yeah, that, we don't fight wars and never will fight wars the way we fought World War Two. Right. That, that way of life is, is gone. It's, yeah. You're most most playing, wars are like like they said in the major chess pain. In a war room with you know sights and you know objects that you're never going to actually see or have to deal with in a tangible manner. We're never going to be lining up two armies on the other side on opposite sides, you know, yeah, just no. letting them shoot at each other. That's not how war is going to be 
completed anymore at all. It's like they yeah. said in the movie Major Pain. All the bloodshed is done now in the halls of Congress. Yeah. Like, it's... It's just a pissing match between two countries. Right. Um, but no, like, one percenter outlaw groups started because they missed that camaraderie. They had money. They went and bought motorcycles. They made a, they made a group, and they wore matching colors, their vest. And then you've got these guys who are now borderline psychopaths. All they did was kill people. That's it. Like, they were 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, and they went and killed people. And if you went and survived and came home, you didn't just kill two or three people. No. You killed a lot of people. That, that was an easy day. You only right. Yeah, people. that was a day. You had the same yeah. thing kind of with Vietnam. I think Vietnam kind of fell into Viet- that. It's and the that's last when, and that's when that, the big resurgence of the Hell, Hell's Angel, big and, resurgence of one percent biker gangs and gangs in general, yeah, mm-hmm. resurged was after Vietnam when the guys came home. See, in World War II, when the troops came home, there were huge celebrations and blah they were blah blah. Here. And in Vietnam, when the troops came home, they were spit on, yeah, cursed at, baby killers, yeah, yeah, and and it was basically what you see from. The from the extreme liberal left now, that's that's how they acted. Then, like they uh, they threw shit at them as they were getting off the planes. Yeah. What what reason do I have now? What once that's happened? What what reason do I have to act like a law abiding citizen? Exactly. Fuck okay. you. I'm better than you. I can kill you in a heartbeat. Yep. And obviously, if they were in Vietnam, they're patient. They have learned patience. Yeah, they're gonna get you. It's, and the thing about like I have I have a cousin that uh, served in Vietnam, and at the time, he was just considered a gay male. Like you know, but now he's like you know full trans. But like and he's but and he was like the first, uh, like president of the VA or some shit like that out in San Francisco. But like she, like I was listening to a, um an interview that she done with the BBC the other day. He's just talking about how, like, you know, they were forced to come out back then. And then they got, like, sexually assaulted and shit. In, in the, you know what I'm saying, in the military. But I'm mm-hmm. just like, damn, like, you got to deal with that and you come out and then people spitting on you, from, you know what I'm saying, and all this shit. That fucks up a person, you know what I'm saying? Like, that will literally fuck a person up. Oh, I, I absolutely. can see where how, like, these things, are, like... Jesus Christ. <laughs> the room's falling apart. It is. But yeah, I can see how that will fuck people up. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then you come back and then you're not appreciated. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. that would throw me for a loop. Yeah, you can only get pushed so far, even as a normal human being. Like, you can get pushed so far. And I know that I, at this point, where I get pushed too far and Danielle goes away and the other guy comes <clears> out. <throat> And then whatever happens while he's out, not really my problem. And there's my there's the lead in to my next topic here. So we're gonna move from the transgenders in the military onto a story that also happened this past week. A man was uh, sentenced or found guilty of he met a trans. This was in Florida. Florida man strikes again. Florida, Florida man. man. Anyway, uh, jumped by Russian man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> One thing better than Florida man, Russian man. So, this this guy meets a woman at a hotel. They had been talking online for like two months. They meet at this hotel. They're seen checking in at X time. Okay, twenty three minutes later, he is seen on camera exiting the hotel with his t shirt around his neck or whatever, like still putting it on. And the woman is found in the hotel room stabbed 119 times. Damn, overkill. So, this is the story. The man said they engaged in a sexual act. And afterwards, she revealed to him that she is a transgender female. So, what? here's my breakdown of this. Here's my guess. Because it, it was literally 23 minutes. So, I'm thinking they were kissing, fooling around, blah, blah, blah. She blows him, and then they're probably getting ready to have sex, and she says, oh, I'm a transgender female, and he did not react how she thought he would, and stabbed her 119 times. Now, I am not taking away from the tragedy of this, because that's that's awful. 119 times, he's eventually stabbing a pot of chili. Right. That There's nothing left to stab. 
Like, literally, I guarantee that last one, he just couldn't lift his arm again. Mm-hmm. That might be why he didn't even get his fucking t-shirt on. Yeah. He couldn't right. even lift his arm to get it through the fucking sleeve. But, there has to be, and whenever I made this point on Facebook, on the article that someone posted, they were like, that's, they said what I said was victim blaming bullshit, and I said, hold the fuck up. I understand that victim blaming is a thing. However, at some point, you have to look at a case-by-case basis. Not everything is lumped together. And some of these fucking instances, we all have to goddamn agree that common sense should be utilized and personal responsibility should be accepted. And keeping things like that a secret until the last second... That is deceitful. Yeah, like you, like if if I'm talking to a chick, and it just so happens to be a fucking dude, like you have to let me know that. You know what I'm saying? And you That's, can make an informed decision yeah, like based you, on the if information. You say, hey, you have. I Let's used to, down even further than that. If you're into some weird fetish, I do and I BDSM. Show up, yeah, like if I show up and like I'm like, oh yeah, we're gonna hook up, whatever, and you're in full leather daddy gear, and this is not <laughs> what I signed on for. Yeah, like, I'll be real fucking mad because I don't right. want to go walk in this room and get my ass beat. I'm not here for that. Like <laughs> yeah. I, you can slap me around slightly and maybe pull my yeah. hair, but and I don't what? want you hauling out a riding crop and taking it to me when I didn't yeah, sign. I don't, we're I'm, learning a lot about Daniel. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't want to walk in a room with a with a woman and her dick's bigger than mine. <laughs> right, I have yeah. that problem. Right, you know and you like, know what? What do you want? <laughs> bet that for a lot of guys no I'm not, I'm not joking like this is going to sound funny what do you want to bet for a lot of guys that would be the concern yeah that, that would be my main concern like, like god like damn you pull it out a hers dick, I'm is like, bigger what the than fuck? mine what you been doing with your life and like, not, not only that but am I going to have to give you away? A, am I going to have to give you a reach around oh no honey I'm not a bottom I'm a top <laughs> oh not today you're not <laughs> yeah, like that <laughs> and that, well that's the problem with like the the far left the extreme it's like you can't talk about what happened in that cuz cuz no one's arguing oh the guy had every right to do it no one no everyone no, agrees right. yeah, the no. guy is a piece of shit and should be faced for murder and and, and I agree I'm for pro capital punishment and should be killed I'm totally for that no one's arguing for his sake they're arguing about the matter of self responsibility it's it, it you know when you when you try to hide something like anything, I mean, you had this back in the eighties and nineties with AIDS. Yeah, what, yeah STDs. Yeah. Look at what's going on with Usher right now. He just got caught with a million dollar hey, yeah, plus lawsuit. Just dollars. for the record, I will take herpes for a million dollars. <laughs> I mean, Valtrex is it, ain't that expensive? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I got I got a job. I got insurance. I can cover the fucking medicine. I'm fine. <laughs> I'll take well, this. Shit. <laughs> I mean, think about this. Like talking about herpes, one in four people has it. How so that means many, one of us have it. How many people have you asked in. in your life, hey, do, do you have herpes? Um, how many sexual partners have um, you legitimately asked? Sexual partners, asked? no, but people, yeah. But I mean, it because one of the guys on this post said, so are you going to ask every woman that you meet that you're potentially interested in? Hey, are you an actual woman or were you once a male? Blah blah blah. I was like, apparently that's what it's fucking coming to. Yeah, like and it gets because and it gets worse and worse more and more because it's like but they can simply say, yeah, I'm a woman because I've been taught now by the left that yeah, I'm a woman, so I don't have to disclose that information anymore. Yeah, I'm a woman. It's like, yeah, no, yeah, no, that's no. not the question I'm asking. Like, that, did you have a dick before? Yeah, right? Have you ever not been a woman? Right. Like that's what. Like I want to say, like, can you provide me like a preschool photo of you? That's what I want to see because I want to know what you. Hey, that's wanna, a dangerous game. No, to play. Yeah, no, because I was saying I want to know what you were. It's five. It's 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 like at five years old, I want to know what well, you were. But here's here. That's a dangerous game to play because what if she's Thai? Fuck. Yeah. yeah see, know, Thai lady boys, man. I've seen I've seen I, I'm, some Thai lady boys in real life when I lived in Vegas, and they will fool you. I have Same seen some Miami. really fucking gorgeous men in my life that not, were hotter than most of the females I've it's, seen. It's, that's, that shit's, that's, that's, in wow. Miami, the, the when fucking you go crazy. to Miami, the thing is, if you have to think to ask, it is. Like, don't, like, if you're, if you're <laughs> yeah. slightly worried, if that person has on a choker, she ain't here for the head game, it's a heat. Like, no, but that's a problem. Level. What about the ones that don't have to wear a choker because they've had that shit shaved down? Exactly. The Adam's apple's gone. But yeah, no, if you, you have don't know. to stop There's the literally thing. only one thing that will prove to you a male or a female. DNA test? Nope. Well, I mean, that, but. <laughs> I'm going to get a DNA test before I climb into bed with you. So there's uh, something to do with the fingers. Hold your hand up, Danielle, like this. 
That, that's not 100% accurate, That's though. not accurate. It's, yeah. it's not. Yeah. Yeah, so I, because I used to make fun of uh, a chick I dated. Uh, she, she, she had, had man the, hands? Had man hands. Because I, I always <laughs> oh, made fun no. of Jerry, the uh, Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld, Seinfeld yeah. episode. Yeah. And she used to get so mad at it. Yeah, it's like, uh, like the, the ring finger is longer than the index. See, nope. now you're having me looking at everybody's fucking hands. See, <laughs> yours? Yours is even. No, it's not you're looking at my nails. My finger is actually way down. Like, when you look at it. That is a lot shorter. It's about even, though. So... I don't know what he's seeing. This does not look like... The no, ring finger and oh, the index. index. Okay. See, like, see, like, mine... Look. The, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, index finger is longer than the ring finger. I thought you were that's saying That's literally one of the like, only... Like, like, like one even. of the few traits, but still, yeah. it could be an anomaly in someone and can be... Hey, you, like, overlooked. I just I need to meet so your my parents. other hand's different though. So. Right, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna need to uh yeah. hey, do you oh, have your birth certificate? Yeah, I'm though. saying like um does anybody you know like around here went to high school with you? I need to talk to these people. I don't think there's any science <laughs> to it. I just think it's I'm gonna go on your great. Facebook page and search way back in those high school friends and be like, what were they? Uh did Christina ever used to be Chris? <laughs> yeah, she's my quarterback. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, now you're a better athlete and you got a bigger dick. That's that's all I need in my life. <laughs> uh, she's playing running back position now. <laughs> <laughs> she's a wide receiver. <laughs> well played. Well played. So the the thing is, like Caitlyn Jenner, kind of bringing it back around, decided that she was gonna hop on this train this week and be like, "What the hell, Trump?" When she been sucking Trump's dick since I'll he say, got... I'll say, bitch, you shut the fuck the up. Office. Like, I was so here for this when she came out. I thought, man, what an opportunity, what a platform for this community. And she's and a I, nut job. I have literally watched her drop this ball so fucking bad that it's the humiliating. Irony. Like, literally, like, literally <laughs> dropped a ball, dropped two. Right. Had a, she, she's saying now that she's had the bottom surgery. This has been out in the news as well, oh, that she's yeah. fully converted, um, which is funny to me because to have the top surgery you have to have all kinds of fucking therapy x amount of hours logged in you have to have a therapist sign off on it here in the united states that means someone signed off on her not necessarily money well, talks money and bullshit does talk walk. yeah right. she he, she she could have gone to japan where i just want to i want to make mention this. of even even you struggle with the he she thing i again i it's my my friend who is transgender female to male I fuck it up probably once or twice a week and by the time it's not even out of my mouth like like I'm having like Tourette's cussing moments because I'm so mad at myself most of them <laughs> as long as you're attempting to go along with their preferred gender it's hard when you knew them before most people who right. after the See, transition the, and the one that I know I knew Brittany when she was Brandon See, that's the thing my cousin I was telling you about like I've never known my cousin as a man like I guess I mean they're, they're so much older to me like the 60 something like I've never known them as a man most of them are be like they they get it it's not something that's easy or natural to convert to um but i was so here i was like man they're finally going to get a seat at the table with with this notoriety and he is just fucked this up left right and sideways from his reality show that he did where he thought he was going to go in and open up all these gates to transgender people and all of them were like fuck you my, your story is not my story you had it easy um, and now going into the bottom surgery that he has, you have to have so much more therapy and this and that and the other. And all of a sudden, less than two years later, he's completely, you know, had both surgeries, which to me states that he has left the country to do so because there's not that amount of time that this can be handled. And this is not how this works. You can't just be like, so um, I'm feeling awfully manly today. Um, I'm going to need you to just handle this for me and walk into plastic surgeon's office. Right. That's not how it works. You have to go through all kinds of therapy where they deem you mentally fit because there are people out here walking around who are like this arm I got right here I was never supposed to have this like I I don't need a right arm this is not how I see myself in the mirror and like literally the psychological recommendations is if it is not going to by the way you do know that that is a real thing right trans trans disabled have you seen this bullshit yeah Yeah. man this trans shit is getting out of fucking (laughs) trans disabled (laughs) yeah Yeah. trans cat like like, like, there is a woman who can walk perfectly well and she paralyzed she, she, she had her yeah had a uh, spinal surgery done. Did she did she get a fucking handicap sticker now? Oh yeah, she's no, in a wheelchair. She, yeah. she, she, she put herself she in a wheelchair. She fucking cheated. That's right. cheating. 
That's goddamn not but fair. This, if they go through therapy, they, they you know obviously you try to get rid of the body dis is an extreme form of body dysmorphia disorder. Yeah, exactly. And they they put you through therapy and they try to be like, no, everybody needs a right and a left. And if you just are insistent, like I'm not supposed to have the right when I look at my look at myself in the mirror, I don't have this right arm. They will actually recommend at a point that you just go ahead and remove the limb because it's causing more than more distress than it is like keeping it than it would be just to go ahead and like get rid of the damn thing. So it, it, it's all on it's all on the spectrum, in my opinion, of body dysmorphia disorder. From you you have you know the bulimia and you know going all the way up into a version of transgender. It's all you know along that line. It's all a spectrum there. And it's all classified as mental illness. All of those, like the the bulimia, anorexia, like it. When when you're talking, like we're not talking about body modification in the form of tattoos, piercings, implants, things like that. We're talking major goddamn surgeries Life that can have destructive psychological results. Yeah. Like, like more destructive than what you were already experiencing. Let me just break it down to this. So as a woman, I am now 35. I've decided that I'm not having kids. There's several different reasons behind that. But I have made this decision. At 35... I, it, I walked in my doctor's office and I was like, okay, you know what? I'd rather just go ahead and get my tubes tied. Like, I, I don't, I've made this, it's not like I'm 20 and like making a rash decision. Like, I'm 35. Like, right now, if I have a kid, the chance of Down syndrome skyrockets to one in like three versus one in five or something like that. Ridiculous. I don't have the numbers on that. But I mean, I, I'm at an age where this is absolutely a decision that I can make for myself and have had plenty of time to give it thought. In the U.S., you have to be 24 before you can just have a voluntary tubal or have two kids. Mm -hmm. So when I was younger and I felt like going down the line that I wasn't going to have children, asking to get this tubal done or get my tubes tied, you, I was refused left, right, and sideways, which mm -hmm. is not going to have an impact on me as a person. And if I, at that point, wanted to have a kid, there's millions out there just waiting to be adopted. Like, right. it's, like getting a tubal just means that I'm not, at any point in time, going to have a child that I am unprepared for financially, mentally, emotionally, what have you. Yeah. So for me to have to fight and fight and fight and fight, I just gave it up. I was like, just give me an IUD and let me get on with my life. <laughs> um, it's, it's ridiculous. I can't make that kind of decision for my body. Like, that's really not going to impact anything, like, as far as how I look. But you have to go through, you know, how many hours of therapy and this and that and the other. Oh. Like, I would have been like, you need to send me a therapy to figure out that I want kids? Sign me up. Where's Sign me right the fuck up. I'll, I'll go right now. See, I had a buddy, uh, kind of the same boat. He didn't want, he hates kids, despises kids. As soon as he turned 18, tried to get snipped. And they were like, no, you can't. You got to wait till you're 24, 25, whatever. 24. And so, like, he, I mean, soon as he turned, like, on his birthday, he went in there with, like, a party hat on and got his balls snipped, you know? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I see the, I see the reason why they make you wait that long because, like, 18, I mean, rash as much as decisions. I think, yeah, you make rash you decisions. You look back yeah. at yourself you and you're like, oh, I thought I, I like, thought I, I got my everything. shittiest tattoo at age 16. Right. But, right. I mean, if yep. you wait till Me the too. legal age, yeah, you, yeah. that's, like, you can point to you and be like, yeah, this 16 and 18 is no different. <laughs> like, right. this one, like, was yeah. the one I got out the So, game. so I don't, it doesn't bother me at the whole 25 thing, but, uh, uh, you know, we're drinking and stuff like that. I think drinking should be knocked down to like 16. Uh, you know, uh, at least beer and wine. Beer and wine at 16, liquor at 18. Well, some countries it is like Yeah, this. oh, yeah. Uh, uh, some countries, if here. you can look over the bar and point at what you want, they will <laughs> give it to you. Yeah. That's still a little bit of a struggle for me in this country. Well, in some, <laughs> states, some states, it used to be before the federal government took it over. Some states used to be 18 to drink beer and wine. Like Maryland, for example, you would have beer stores and wine stores, and it was just 18 to drink uh, beer and wine but then uh, spirits and everything else higher alcohol percentage you're looking at you know you had to be 21 but I would agree with 18 we're not talking about I, I think it's along the lines of if you're old enough to serve in the military exactly. and potentially die you know, then beer. you, you don't can have, have a fucking yeah, you, beer. You should be able to like take a shot or two. Just, I, yeah. We yeah. also don't teach responsible drinking here. Like if you if you're raised in Germany, yeah. like your parents are like, okay, have a beer with dinner. Like you know what moderation is. You're not you're not seeing these isolated parties where you have, your parents have people over and everybody's just slamming in what they can get in as a weekend warrior versus you know you're having drinking every day drinking with every dinner day and, with right. dinner to have one or two glasses. Like, a lot of it. My, Diane and Ed. Like they they go at it like they have a beer fridge, 
a wine rack, a wine fridge with dual temperatures, this is, and a this liquor This is her cabinet. mom and dad. Um, <laughs> and, and yes, they we, do. They've got all of like, this. <laughs> this was great when glorious. I was in high school. Like it was just readily available. <laughs> But I mean, they they drink every every like dinner. Like they go through a bottle of wine together. Like I've seen responsible drinking. Um, and they're also not going anywhere. No. After they, I mean, it's, it's, that's the big problem. The difference between us and like Europe and stuff. I mean, you think about like the UK. It's like the size of you know <clears throat> Texas. It's probably smaller yeah, than that. Yeah. And so it's like the the distance that you have to travel is the biggest problem in the United States. Like if you go out drinking. Uh, you know, and then the pricing of well, not only that, their mass tra- their mass transit systems yeah, it's are it. far superior to ours. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Like you but literally, you only hop, because you it's hop, so small though. You I hop mean, a bus, you yeah. hop a cab, or you hop a train. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. literally, you can go to another country for a day of day drinking yeah. and ride the train home, and then trolley it back to your fucking apartment. Yeah, like yeah. to your loft. The oh, U.S. Yeah. is just so damn big. big that yeah. It's not like. I can go to another state, drive to another, like, have somebody take me to another state. Like, I can get to three states in 20 minutes, or two different states in 20 minutes from where we are right now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like we're that far away. It's not like we're landlocked into the middle of Indiana. But, I mean, it's just, all across the board, it's a lack of responsibility. People wanting to take responsibility for their own actions. This dude obviously went a little ham with 119 stabbings, but... As a rule, if you're going to be having sex with somebody, you need to be a old enough and mature enough to have a discussion as to, like, especially if you're into some kind of kink or, you know, whatever that is. Anything I, that would be considered out of the ordinary yeah. or if, or if well, it's what's something. What's ordinary? Like, hold on. Here's, I'll give you the definition. If in your mind, it is something that you would not be comfortable discussing with everyday people in a conversation. <laughs> It is something that needs to be discussed with someone that you are planning to be intimate with. Yeah. You can't just spring stuff like on yeah. that. Like somebody, like I, I, even if, let's say she was post-op, like one of the things that they don't tell you about um, when you go through the surgery is literally they take, if you're going female to male, you're female. still rubbing wieners together. Yeah, they you, take your you. own parts and invert <laughs> them and use everything. Yeah. Like It's a wiener sock. It yeah, is. So, so one of the things that they don't tell you about is when they create a vagina from your own scraps, a lot of what they use is the, the skin of your balls. Well, guess what? Still grows hair. So now you put your dick in somebody and you have the hairiest vagina you've ever come across. So, and we're not talking outside. We're not talking bush. We're talking that like you get in there. The so it's kind, it's kind of like a, like a cock pocket. Yeah. Like a fifi. Cock pocket. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Like a fifi with hair. Like, oh my god! But that's what you like. You get in there, and so so that happens, and then you come into like safety risk. So let's say you stick your dick in it, <clears> and all of a sudden it's furry. That's gonna, you have a condom on. That's gonna do you no good. That friction from that hair. Do they use like the nose trimmer things? To, like <laughs> turn inside of it. <laughs> the Norelco. Um, no, Somebody get on that. There's yeah, gotta be a marker for that. Yeah. I gotta trim my vagina hair, like not yeah, the outside, the inside. But yeah, the the personal responsibility thing it has to be factored into. And here's the here are the points that I made on on this post where I was talking to these people. I said, "Look, I'm willing to drive any of you, any of you right now that will agree. I will drive you to Arsenal Street in St. Louis, Missouri." And I'm going to park at one end, and I'm going to drop you off, and I'm going to let you out. And you're going to walk down Arsenal Street, and I'm going to loop around and go wait for you at the other end. And if anyone stops you or confronts you, you be sure to let them know about your right to travel unimpeded and blah, 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 and I'm sure you'll be just fine. Or does your common sense tell you, hey, this probably isn't a good fucking idea. I don't belong there. Probably shouldn't fuck around. At some point, personal responsibility has to be factored in. It has to be considered on a case-by-case basis. I also made the point of, I'm a huge Assassin's Creed fan. Okay, Love Assassin's Creed. I feel that I, at some point in my life, if I have the funds, I should be able to travel to Syria to visit Masyaf Castle without fear of getting my head cut off. However, common sense and personal responsibility tells me, hey, don't do that. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, this is what it comes down to. Since 1965 was the first case of trans slash gay panic, which is basically, if for those of you who don't know, the d- gay panic defense is 
I was outside taking a piss on a wall and some dude put his hands on me. I thought he was trying to fuck me. So I brashed his brains in. Which might have been true. But I, it might have been, okay. been true, but you went a lot hard there. Right. And I just automatically assume that everyone's <coughs> trying to fuck me. So That is a <laughs> false, false <laughs> assumption. It's... No, it's real. It's, it's very, it's, I, I, I mean, y'all too can speak for yourself, but I'm good over here. So this this whole thing, this gay panic, trans panic defense has been around since 1965. That's the first time it was used in a court of law to get to vacate a conviction of assault and battery. Um, also, homicide is when it's used in there. Trans women at the rate of 55% of the LGBT community, that's the homicide rate. 55% of the LGBT assault within that community is happening on trans women. So do I believe that there is a hunt on, an absolute hunt on for trans women? Absolutely. However, this woman seemingly put herself in this situation where she did not disclose everything that was going on. I'd almost compare the numbers though to like say just a non-trans woman uh, in prostitution. I well, bet the murder rates are pretty high in that too. Yeah. Oh, well, here's right. my thing though. Like we have Also, this- how, how much of that percentage is LGBT on LGBT. I bet we that's not tackled. I, I because I'm going to tell you what, I've up. seen lesbian couples and I've seen gay couples oh. go the fuck at it and they kill... There's been, the many, fire out of each other. been stories of them killing each other. Yeah, Dude, you get these people that are fucking raging, I'm going to tell you what, little flamboyant flaming Terry can turn into Hulk Terry and remind you I'm a fucking man. Anybody who's showing up at your house with a U-Haul on the second date should be looked at as skeptical <laughs> and maybe not safe, male or female or otherwise. But my issue with this is we have this what? trans... Wait, what? <laughs> like, you don't know this? Like, it's like, like especially lesbians, but like, there's this long-running joke. We're gonna move right in. We're oh, just, they just date once and then they're like... You get into you haul or am I getting into you haul? Like they just show up and move in together, like immediately. That's, that's it's a long recipe for disaster. It's a recipe. Yeah, it's just nuts. I didn't even have a roommate like that in college. <laughs> <laughs> my thing is, like, we have this trans panic defense and this gay panic defense. Where's my male panic defense? Because walking these streets, like, like especially in the neighborhood I'm in, with this ass, I never know what's happening to me. Like I. Now like, I will in- say this: you would be more likely, as a woman, who killed a man that you deemed as a threat, you are more likely to get away with that killing. Yeah, easy. Not necessarily. Oh, not not yeah. what we're seeing recently in the media. We have a woman in Florida who... Florida has a, a guard... Stand Florida your, man's wife. <laughs> Florida man's wife. There, There's a... What is it? A guard your castle? Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Defend stand your ground. castle. Which is whatever it is. Castle doctrine. Or castle doctrine, yes. So that's that takes place in Florida. Basically, it's, it's very similar to here. I think we have castle doctrine here or stand your ground. Yeah. Um, this man walked into our home and was attempting to like rob and assault her and already just beat the fire out of her oldest son who tried to get in his way. Fired a gun into the ceiling. Just you, gave him a black warning. lady. It was a black lady. Yeah. Yeah. Fired a gun into the ceiling. Didn't even like aim at this guy and like go <clears> over <throat> his shoulder. Like literally just one warning shot into the ceiling of her own home and got sentenced to twenty years remember, for yeah, defending. Yeah, that. like it was the most fucked up thing I've heard. I've I've no women. You know what she should have done? Put a shot bullet him. in. Shot him <laughs> in the fucking face. Did I man mean, can't go to the court? <laughs> right. That's. I mean, she was doing what she thought was best for her in that moment. She didn't want to be a murderer or a killer. She thought she was... I mean, I get Well, it. that's not murder. Like, that's... No. Killing and murder, two different things. Uh, obviously. But, but she, in the, in that moment, made the decision to not take a life, but to just scare him off. If someone like, wishes to do you grave bodily harm and you me. spare them, again, personal Never, responsibility. I mean, it's, if you if you read Why anything, would you leave someone alive who... I mean, that dude, Max, is going to get 5 to 10, maybe 15 years. Maybe. And so he's going to be out in 7. What's to stop him but, from but coming back? But even if you back? don't kill him, like, you're going to make him you know, think, man, maybe I shouldn't do this shit again. Because, maybe. Yeah. Because, or, like, or, he spend, or he spends 7 years dieseling out of his mind around a bunch of other fucking psychopaths locked up in a cage, and he's going, man, when I get out, that, that, that bitch and her son are completely fucked now. True, true, true. I mean, you shoot to kill. Here's the thing. <clears throat> if you read any, like, classical literature about, you know, the art of war or anything like that, the one thing it preaches over and over and over and over is never leave your enemy alive. Do not give them a chance to rally and come for you again. Right. 
And, and if I, they have a son, kill him too. Yeah. Because that kid's going to grow up with nothing but you on his mind. And this can become a distant memory for you. Hell and then 20 years later, you get a knock on your door and you open it up. You don't know who this dude is and he shoots you in the fucking face. That's how we send troops to Iraq look for weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> <laughs> because... Yeah. Daddy said they were there. Yeah, because dad you knows Saddam tried to kill dad. And he's like, well, I'm going to kill him. I mean, it happened. just... The the assault rate how like I don't really talk about this too much because it's it, it's a personal story to me. My my story is I was raped when I was in my early twenties. Um, I'm not. I had by the time I remember what happened, I was drugged and raped. We're we're looking about six months down the line before I even realized that there was an assault. I knew something had happened that night, but I woke up in my own bed with the guy I was dating at the time. So like. Who's to say I didn't get fucked up and come home and do some weird shit and was just like, well, now I'm a little more bruised than normal. So, like, there was something in the back of my mind. But I, six months later, when, I like, my, my memory comes crashing down and I get those first memories, who am I going to go? The cops are going to be like, why weren't you here six months ago? We can't test your blood. There's no physical evidence. Like, the, I'm basically, what what did this guy do to you that now you're getting revenge on him is how that conversation is going to go when I show up into a police station six months later. So... I, and the other thing, like, not to take away from what happened to you, but it's also a very blurry reconstruction put together by your mind. Right. Yeah, it is I not a clear recollection <clears throat> that you have. I don't talk about the stuff that I do know, but I don't have the whole night. It comes, like, we, we've talked about, I think I have post-traumatic stress disorder. Like, when it, this box that I have in my mind gets kicked open and the shit comes flying out and I'm trying to stuff it back in. Like, I'm almost paralyzed for, for weeks. Like, I can barely move. I can barely go to work. I can barely function. I have, like, flashbacks. Not only where I'm in the room and see what happens, but if I'm in flashback and you try to, like, comfort me or, like, put a hand on me to steady me, I go immediately into my body in and that situation. defensive. And I yeah. literally fight my way back out. And if you're in front of me, I'm kicking, screaming, punching, pulling hair, and you could get fucked up because I don't know that you're you. I, I'm in that moment. So... I had to handle my business in another way, and I'm not going to obviously put that out here, but um, you never leave somebody in a position where they that they can come get you again. So Well, there, I, I watched a story about a woman who a home invasion happened in her house. A man broke in, raped her, was found guilty. Okay? Go, they go to court, found guilty. He was sentenced to like eight years. Oh, you got more than two weeks? He served He served three years, gets out, and within two weeks of his parole, broke into her house again and raped her again. Same woman. This was actually on an episode of Hoarders. Have you seen the new Arkansas law where if you get pregnant via rape, you have to notify your rapist that you're carrying his child? I'm going to notify you with a 45. But no, but yeah, how you like, I'm going to be like, hey, you're going to be a dad. It's not, like, I mean, not anymore. Like, it's, yeah, it's not like I have your phone number like, hey. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> Remember Mr. that time you raped me? Mr. Like, Raper Man, um, <laughs> just know. So yeah, Junior every, coming. <laughs> every single state in this union, and I've done the research on this, if I am raped and I get pregnant... And I decide to carry the baby to term. That father has legal rights. There's nothing I can mm -hmm. do to take those rights away. So whether he's in jail or not, he has the ability to go to court and demand partial custody, full custody, whatever, of that child. So now I'm forced to act, interact for the rest okay, of my he has, life. He has the right to, to request it. Doesn't mean he's going to get it. Because there's right. a lot of fathers that are good fathers that don't get custody of their kids yeah. and don't even get visitation but, or like, see them and how that would you kind of stuff. Like, explain that to your kids. Like, hey, how'd you meet mom? Like, oh, well... I roofied her. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then... One night, just happened to rape her. Yeah. I she caught her walk. walking down an alley. She was wearing this little skimpy black dress. And, and I, I just thought, couldn't And resist. the percentage is less than 1% that that happens. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Not yeah. Like, it's not like... It's not like... This is not something occurrence. that's happening. Yeah, but, the majority of rape is actually done... Like it's it's it's, you know, it's executed by people you know, right? Like it's it is between. It's very rare that a stranger is yeah. going like as women. Yes, we are bigger targets, not just for rape walking down the street, but any kind of assault. Unless you live in Europe. Uh, yeah, I mean here in the U.S., it's it's like it's it's a strange world. Like here in the U.S., now, like literally you can walk down and like the road in jeans and a t-shirt, not like really trying to get fancy and get hey hey mama. Hey, girl. So, hold on. Hold on. Oh, you were asking for it. Hold yeah. on. Check this. You whistled at me like now, a dog. Now wait a, <laughs> now, wait a second. So, 
have you heard this new shit where the feminist liberal community is now trying to push for if a man walks up to a woman and says something like we're not even talking about catcalling let's just say we're talking about hey you know my my name is blah 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 you know like can i give you my number I'd, I'd like to take you out for coffee or go get dinner. I wish it were that nice. Sexual assault. Oh, no. Sexual fucking assault. As in, and like, shit like that is the reason why people don't believe. Like, Victims. That's like, just why right. people, people don't want forward. To, well, well, not only that, people want to bitch about marriage and blah, blah, blah. First of all, marriage is a complete fucking Archaic. farce. It's so stupid. Get fucking, over it. It's yeah. not, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a fucking but it's just, a, just relationships in general. There are a lot of people that are like, I don't understand why guys, and I see it's mostly women that post these things, but I don't understand why guys can't be faithful or stay in a relationship, blah, blah, blah. Well, this kind of mentality where this is now sexual, where you want this to be sexual assault, if we approach you to talk to you, why do you think websites like Tinder exist? Where we go on, like you can go on and just specifically find people that are down to fuck. And with nothing else attached to it. Oh, that's difficult for y'all? No, but I'm, just, I'm just saying. Cause no, I, you have a vagina. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally, was born with it, a 700-pound seven, seven woman with a vagina can a get for that. laid. Yes, yeah. can, absolutely. You can go online, create yourself a nice little website, and people will pay you to eat. You do it. Do you, girl? Uh, that's, like, that's, everybody, like oh, I'm a big no. girl. Like, if I you've mean, got a tall. vagina and you can't get laid... You simply haven't asked more than two people. Yeah. <laughs> because that's the thing. Somebody's always willing to fuck. Here's that's why I want to say it right. Dudes are putting their dicks in dumb things all the time. I see we have, dude, <laughs> guys will fuck an exhaust pipe. Yeah. <laughs> guys will yeah. fuck yeah. fruit. Cars. Yeah, I, we'll, I see we'll fuck fuck actual I'll exhaust pipe. We'll fuck couch cushions. Fuck yeah. your couch. <laughs> and they're like, man, why? Well, I mean... <laughs> I was Shit. voting. He was asking for it. <laughs> you know? right. Did you see the way this couch was looking at me? Couch All is, soft and cushy. Couch got a fat ass, man. What do you, <laughs> what do you expect? Slip cover right up a little bit. <laughs> and I, I'd have to pull out. So, you know. But yeah, no, like just the notion, just the notion of approaching a female to ask her on a date. First of all, for any guy, it doesn't matter. He could be the best looking guy in the world have a killer smile, great personality, but there's still that in the back of his mind of man she's going to she's going to shoot me down, blah blah blah. It I honestly believe that it and it's takes the people that let that impact them that that drives them like oh I got shot down, that get aggressive and like then it comes into the situation where you own me this because I exist. We I'm not going to mention any names, but somebody we talk about on a pretty regular basis that's not part of our friends is real close to hitting that line. Uh, I've been shot down, I've been shot down, I'm shot down as a man. Oh. Merely existing in this world, you own me Yeah. this. <laughs> See, and me, she'll tell you this. For the for the most part, like I can go, I can walk up and talk to the most. You know this too. I can walk walk up and talk to the most beautiful woman in in the in the room, and but it's not like I'm not being sexual about it. Like I'll just stand there and talk, you know, just being funny, cracking jokes, blah blah blah. Yeah. And she can be throwing every sign in the world out to me that she is ready to fucking mate. And Danielle will tell you. Nine times out of ten, I'm completely fucking oblivious to it because it is so far out of my mind. He's that so I'm... into himself is what he's trying to say. Here. <laughs> Pretty much, can't even see your interest. In like, if you have a like, genuine conversation, in like you're know just laughing and joking, like you know, I don't think, like I do that too. I don't think about that kind. Of I am shit more yet. apt to tell her, "You are so beautiful that you and I are going to have a great time tonight when I get home. It's just too bad you're going to miss out on it." <laughs> then I would be to say, then I would be to pick up on her vibe and be like. So you ready to get out of here? <laughs> like I would be more apt to tell her about how I'm going to masturbate to her later, right. <laughs> and there's nothing she can do about that, than I would be to pick up on any of her sexual advances. Like I, I, okay, I, Haley Fawn, Haley Fawn had to literally tell me I want to fuck you. I remember well, that. It gets like, it gets <laughs> like that. <laughs> I, like I like I had a girl do that to me. Like she was like, "You coming over tonight?" Like it was in front of some of my friends, like back in school, like high school. I was like, "For what?" <laughs> you know how and, it, and it was like, 
and they all let this collective. What the fuck, man? What? I was like, well, did I, mean, I miss that? I don't know what she. I don't know what when it's asking. happening to you. You're oblivious. Yeah, I'm like, you can see it happen to other people, and you're like, yeah, dude, dude, she wants your dick in and around her mouth, yeah, like just uh, all over. I'm, 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 just, I'm clueless why they pissed off. They're like, man, you should have went. I was like, she just said when you come, I don't know what she wants. Like, she's not wanting to do her homework for her. Like, I, don't I don't know, know this girl. My ass, that's how you end up getting accusations. <laughs> Amy day. Schumer has this quote, like, being a woman, I think, like, they, they can stir and toss her around being plus size, and I do see her way go up and down a little bit. She's not what I would consider super plus size. She's a fairly cute girl. She gets a lot of shit because she's got a big mouth, but I understand that. She's, like, literally was talking about, like, somebody had told her, like, as a bigger woman, your opportunities are, you know, decrease the fighting man. She, Said I, at 160 pounds, like I walk right out of here and catch a dick on the street on my way home. Right before, between the building and my cab, like don't like. <laughs> it ain't yeah. that hard. Yeah, like most most guys, most guys have no problem. Like, and that goes into the whole slut shaming thing. But most guys are like, "Hey, you want to fuck? Like, we we can do that." Whereas women are. Like they have to be more reserved about it, and, We're supposed which I think to be. is, I, yeah, I think supposed it's supposed to be classy, but like, yeah, it's with no gag reflex at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy I a think gag you'd be reflex. Super classy, but it also wants your eyes water, so all yeah. of your eye mascara, mascara yes. is <laughs> dripping down your face. I right love the fact that you chose my dick over. Burning. I'm gonna make you look goth. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of this though is women attacking women on it like yes it's women yes. Just, quit it you know sh- slut shaming yeah. other women and that kind of stuff I mean for guys if you don't like to fuck don't yeah. talk about it this is the thing I don't understand when it comes to the guy aspect of this we just fucked the two of us but I'm the whore like, oh, I, can, I didn't I, do it by myself I've covered like, that I've covered that <laughs> hold on so the whole thing now this this ties into male insecurity and I guarantee the two of them will agree with me here so what happens is most men never want to admit this, but most of us view ourselves, doesn't matter how you outwardly portray, but most of us will look at ourselves as just like, God damn, I am so broken and damaged and such a piece of shit. If you are willing to fuck me and let me put my dick in you within in three days or less, what's wrong with you? True. And but see, then, but and that's where, that's, that's where, oh, she's like... Okay, you you did all this work. You put in all this work to get with this hot fucking girl. She lets you in. You get it. It was fucking great. And then your insecurity kicks in. You're like, she's a fucking hua. <laughs> and then, or, or if you hear a story nah. like, oh, well, yeah, then my friend fucked. You're like, what? Oh, fuck. I'm like, I'm an afterthought now. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of it's fuck- guy talk. I mean, like. For us to say like Locker room ch- talk. some chicks a whore or something like <laughs> that. Grab him yeah, by the pussy. Grab him yeah. by the pussy. <laughs> it's like, like, to us, it's not derogatory for us. Like, I mean, you you know, right. we're like, oh shit, you got a whore? Nice job. But Where'd it go? if a female friend overhears this, oh, yeah. the female will circulate that shit publicly and be like, she's a fucking whore. She fucked him. Like, like they had only met like two hours like, before. We need our safe spaces so we can talk about grabbing pussies. This, right. is, this, is, like, <laughs> this is the aggravating fact to me, personally, is the, the word whore. I've never charged anybody. If you're going to shame me, at least call me a slut because I ain't getting paid. Like, I should start charging I'm, to supplement my income. I, I don't hey, give all arms. women should charge something. I mean, we there's always... Something. Hold up. I'm not going to lie. Hold there's up. some kind there's of always deal, a but price. I cash there's on my nightstand. You paying? I'm, did you take her ass on a date? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, like Riley said in the boondocks. <laughs> why do I got to pay for her dinner or her movie? Why can't I just get that hold of money up front, have sex with her, and she can go buy some groceries? Yeah, right. That's what I'm just like, look. I mean, you paying for the, either you paying for the gas to go get the pussy, you paying for like the dinner in the movie, the movie that you didn't want to fucking see in the first right. place. Right. Like, you paying for something. You paying for your time and attention. You know what I'm saying? You're paying for the pussy one way or another somehow. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I have a whole problem with, you know, actual whores like if it's consent to consenting adults put the money on the nice hand and let's just make this right and, yeah let that's, me, let okay. me be done with my life like, here you go <laughs> speak like this is another social just stigma bullshit scenario or the uh, like scene but look at the countries that have legalized prostitution and then go examine their sex crime it is almost non fucking existent. Philippines are pretty bad. Yeah. Philippi- hold on, bad. Philippines are a goddamn free for all though. That is like Lord of the Flies yeah, on an that's island. Kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what Lord of the Flies. Right, right, right. But I mean, about. just way more people. Just way more flies people on an island. And you also have to realize too, 
the Philippines, Dave and I were talking about this a couple weeks ago. Other than Manny Pacquiao, what true <laughs> hyper male role model do they have? Because in the Philippines, the men are relegated to doing yeah, the, the w- women's work. They raise the children. The women go out and leave the country and get actual jobs or become prostitutes in other countries, high-profile priced prostitutes, and send the money back. But these men are relegated to taking on female roles. Mm-hmm. And so they are very emasculated. Hold on. Now, Danielle, you just made the whole fucking sob face. Now, think about... Okay, hold on. Nobody can emasculate you but you. No, that no, is that no, is that's false. Not, that's not true. That is, that you is, know what? That I is can, an alternative I can fact. walk out of here... Yeah, yeah, that is fake news. I can walk the fuck out here Wrong. right now and just find someone... Across, I can cross the street and go to save a lot and find someone immediately that I know I am physically, psychologically, and in every other conceivable way superior to in this life. Oh, and so you're going to treat somebody how tradi- society has traditionally treated them as a female. Yeah. Oh, no, poor baby, I'm uh, sorry for you. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> when have you ever been traditionally treated like a female? Oh, are you a fucking kidding me? And kid? not have fired you, back. Have you? Have, did you see how I was raised? Like, I literally had to move 800 miles away <laughs> at the age of 18 and create my own life to get away from the traditional roles that I was raised with. So no, I didn't come out the oven like this. I had to work and make and mold myself. So absolutely, had I stayed with my parents who love me dearly, if you ever hear this, I know you do, and I know you thought you were doing what's best for me, but no, I had to create my own. I had, like, I would have, had I stayed home, had I not gotten the life experience that I earned by leaving and going somewhere else completely, I would be very, very different than I and am. Unfortunately, you live in a country that allows you to do that True. because you got. I mean, that's the thing about that's my biggest argument argument against feminists is that like they cry about this stuff, and I'm like, yeah, you, I, I have no problem with them pointing out like, oh, you know, certain things, whatever, because uh, it's always evolving, it's always changing. We get as society gets more progressive in that manner, not like the far left progressive, but it progresses in its social construct. So, but you look at like, for instance, just recently, uh, in uh, uh, what country was it? I don't know. Some fucking sand country, but, uh, <laughs> there, there was a, there was a, a 12 year old raped his cousin or vice versa. A 16 year old raped a 12 year old cousin or something like that. And so the other side of the family, they get retaliation, like raped, like gang raped, his sister. I don't know uh, yeah, that we like, should use rape as retaliation. No, I was, like, that's I, fucked up. I was, uh, I've seen that story. I yeah. didn't read it, but I remember saying it, though. And I'm like, yeah, these... Uh, and and uh, that's an extreme version of it, you know. But, and but there's... I mean, you got countries that are, you know, making women wear veils and, and getting stoned because right. their husband cheated on them. Crazy shit like that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that... Everyone just kind of bl- turns a blind eye to that stuff. It's, it's on the left, that is. You know, they all turn the blind eye to it. Right. But, Oh, we got well, let, let me ask you this, Danielle. Do you agree that mothers and fathers parent differently? I believe that individuals parent differently versus my dad. Do let's you, let's talk but, about my experience because this is what I can give you. Hold on. Well, I mean, but also looking at Look people at, that you were close to growing up, typically a mother and a father have different that tactics. wasn't even true. Like, tactics, yes, but that wasn't even true in my house. My mom and my dad both worked. My dad's job offered, gave him the opportunity to work out at home. So my dad was in charge of dishes, of dinner, of child care after school because my mom was still working. Well, I got drunk, like... But I, imagine your mom's not there because she's think, working in another country and sending money home and your dad can't work because there is no job to be had. I don't know. I, I can't speak for Ed Hoffman. I imagine he would have lost his mind. But um, here's the thing. Like, people are like, you got to let a man be a man, and I'm, I'm not stopping him. It's not my fault that your manly voice isn't being heard over mine. Because at, as a, like, down at an evolutionary level, women's voices are obviously higher pitched and softer, for the most part, to have the male voice trump over them. So how about I have stopped letting... My, I just haven't had this tone of voice anyway. That's just now you're not going to speak over it <laughs> anyway. But I've stopped like letting that interfere with how I'm going to live my life. If you have a point to make, I'm here for it. I'm going to hear you out, even if it completely disagrees with mine. I'm not going to talk over you. I'm going to listen to you. But I'm not here. Like, just you need to let a man be a man. Nobody's stopping him. Just because me being who I am and in charge of my own life, and I don't know everything, and I'm not the right on every topic. I'm wrong, you know. 
as often as I'm right, if not more so, and I'm constantly learning and growing. But as far as emasculating you, you chose that when I decided that I made a more valid point. Oh, well, she didn't let me be a man. Nobody stopped you. You but, could have been a man in that situation, whatever I did. But I'm referring to what just do you call the, a man? I'm referring to the Philippines where these men, there are no jobs for them to have. They there's not. And the women are the only ones able to leave the country right. and go get these jobs. And send the money back, and the man <clears throat> has to do like can do nothing but raise his children, and has to serve as both mom and dad because mom's gone. And so this country, then occasionally, they have things just spring up, and people go fucking crazy because you're not going by the natural fucking order and whatever societal constructs people want to try to place. Let's look back at the cavemen. Let's look at every fucking animal species, save for like five, where the male will provide primary care, right. care for the young over the female. Y'all need to be some seahorses. You can start carrying the babies. And, see, and, and that's just it. Like, you've got one fucking oddity. One. One oddity Speaking there. Speaking of that, really weird, like, animals that do fucked up shit that are not along the lines, wallabies, if they're being chased... By an animal like that's trying to predator, like be predatory to them and eat them, they will literally reach in their pa- pouch, rip out their joey, toss it to the side to distract the predator and keep the fuck going. As a, yeah, that's like, like, yeah, that's like, like the anti mom. Yeah, like, fuck them kids. I'm hold on, right. hold on. <laughs> now you you can joke about that. How and uh, but here's here, the thing: joey. even human beings will say, you, "Ask anyone, ask anyone, what would you do if your house was on fire?" Oh, I'm going to get my kids out, blah, 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 blah. Everybody thinks that, and then that's how they end up outside of a burning house going, my babies are in there. Because self-preservation's a motherfucker mm-hmm. when the flames are kissing your ass. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get the cats out of here. You're on your own. But, you uh... might. You might. <laughs> Just think about this. If you're panicking, if you're panicking, and you're going to grab Boo and Majin, yeah, right. They're going to be running the fuck away because they think their ass is in trouble. And they probably started the fire. <laughs> they probably did start the fire. Our cats are riotous. I don't know. You've, all, you've been the one who came the closest to burning this shit down. Um, <laughs> but it could happen. These cats it was are... no fire. <laughs> the entire apartment filled with smoke. That's just smoke. Yeah, it was smoke. You can just open the door and get rid of that. I was in the yeah. shower. That stuff got so deep in my lungs because I couldn't leave. I got bronchitis. <laughs> well, like, I couldn't even... What was hey, I going to do? I was got trapped. An, you got insurance. It's okay. Yeah, I do have But, yeah. but no, you look, you look at prostit- <laughs> like the original point, though, the prostitution. You look at these countries that have legalized prostitution and their sex crimes have pretty much diminished. Like, they are almost non-existent. I'm here for it. Like, everyone thinks that, like, in the Netherlands, Amsterdam, they think Mm. weed is legal. No. Weed is not legal. They just don't fucking care. Mm. They have better things to do with police resources and money than to focus on weed. I just don't understand why prostitution is not legal, period, anyway. As long as it's not sexual slavery, like, you're probably... That's why sex trafficking exists, is because those countries, prostitution is illegal. Like... As long as you're not being forced against your will to do something, then I have no problem with it. I have, like, fully supportive of sex workers here in the U.S. Please be safe. Please take care of yourself, whether you're actually, like, in the field, like, picking up jobs <laughs> on a Saturday night, or you're doing some kind of phone-slash-web activity. Well, and that's just it. Like, the, the whole picking up jobs on a Saturday night, whatever, that's where real danger comes exactly. into play because you're not in a controlled safe environment whereas if you go to the brothels out in nevada i dare someone to fuck around in one of those you'll get shot in the fucking head before you've even done what you thought you were going to do i had uh, my uncle was a pimp like a like a live pimp i didn't know that <laughs> like though. a live pimp. like he was like a real live pimp like when you know when somebody say he was like got, the godfather like when, when, when people say they like had hoes i'm like you know what i'm saying i'm just thinking like oh He's saying he got a lot of girls, but no, he had like real life homes. Yeah, workers. And he would he would like come in town and he would like and I was like, Why is his girlfriends always stay at these hotels? Like the they would be at, like <laughs> he would take him out to Ferris Avenue because he was from Ohio. And like and I was like, Why is his girlfriends always stay over here? But I didn't know what it was at the time. Yeah. But like they were protected. Like, I mean, he took care of them. You know what I'm saying? Like if yeah. any if anything happened, you know, they were taken care of. But then again, if they fucked up they were taken care of. They were taken care of. Care of. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? 
But it's, 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 it's a weird situation. How it's it not plays Pimp's going to realize that if you damage the goods too much, you're, that good ain't going out and making any money. So there's got to be a... That's called gorilla pimping, though, when you, yeah. when you beat the bitches. So. I mean, look, we both, we everyone in here, we all know people who couldn't get laid in a monkey whorehouse with a bag of bananas hanging out the front of their pants. <laughs> they couldn't. I but remember those days. The thing, They're entitled to, I'm a man, I the, deserve sex. But, but the thing is, is if there were actual brothels here all across the U.S. that were legal for them to go to and spend their hard-earned money with no with no fear of repercussions, like legal consequences. I mean, technically are what they call like crack and meth houses, though. But like, you can just go in and fuck. Sex robots fixes the whole thing. That that absolutely <laughs> yeah, and you know okay so let's I think we're gonna we're direction. gonna we're gonna delve deeper into the mental disorder thing like the mental illness. But there's feminists against sex robots now. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't and, care. Hold on. And, and you, you know what? You know what I found. You know what I found about most <laughs> right. feminists. Most feminists who have opinions on sex. Every Aren't single one that I've seen, I wouldn't stick my dick in if I was coked yeah. out of my mind. You know, a lot of those feminists are single. But you, very there is their a, cats don't even like yeah. them. There is a doll Literally. maker in Japan who makes child, like and that's child, what I was just getting ready to I knew get you were into. Right there. Yep. Child size sex dolls, and literally will ship them to people all over the world because it's not illegal to have a child sex doll. There, there was an article that came out about a year or two, and apparently somebody in Australia caught wind of this. And there were, the question is, and it's still an open issue with me. I haven't really settled it in my in, in my heart or my mind. But if a predator or potential predator, let's say, orders this doll in attempt to stop from escalating onto a real human child, are we not getting a win here? Or is somebody who's going to escalate going to continue to escalate anyway? Okay. Here's what, here's what settled me on it. So the actual real dolls that are made... A couple ordered a real doll, and like a year later, the guy divorced his wife and wanted to marry his real doll. He prefers her over any human female now. So this doll's going to be so, the beneficiary. Ain't, so, ain't so, no doll can make so, a sandwich yet. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, have you, have you seen the movie Ex Machina? I have not yet. M- you know, have you seen yeah, that? Yeah, I saw it, yeah. Fuck yeah, have you it's seen good. it? No, I've you need seen to watch that movie. I've seen our robots kind of like... <laughs> no, no, you need to see Ex Machina. But that that robot was too much like a real woman. It like left him high and dry. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, killed, him. Yeah. killed him. Killed him. Killed him. You're killed him and left. Well, yeah. It said I had a headache. <laughs> <laughs> but look, like, but here's the thing. That's, <laughs> that's where the AI thing comes in. Like, you got, you have to put a limiter on the AI. However, sex robots... They're going to fix a lot of problems. Sex robots are going to fix overpopulation. Sex robots are going to fix sex crimes. Because, and here's the thing, here's here's where I was going with the child size sex dolls. Like you said, if it can prevent even one person who may have pedophilic tendencies from acting on it, would that not be a victory? Yeah. I, it's such an uncomfortable topic. Nobody yeah. wants to talk about pedophilia. And that's the problem. And you problem. and I had a discussion a while ago. I think it needs to be treated as a, a mental illness. You did. And oh, people it need up. to talk about it. But it's it's listed as, I mean, it's a mental illness, but like, it's, it's shit that they're doing now that they're putting out there to make it seem like it's, I don't want to necessarily say it's okay, but like. First of all, let me just clear this up. Okay. Someone who wants to have sex with six-year-olds, what the fuck? Yeah, like. That's, that's weird. Yeah, that's However, weird. the. The, the 12, 13, 14 year old age range well let me just again I'm going to shatter this societal construct of the generation that we live in now it doesn't matter what your delicate sensibilities say it, a, a child a, 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 a woman's time like when she's ready yeah. nature says otherwise because when that girl has her first period it doesn't matter if it happens at nine years old, which granted, psychologically, she's probably not developed enough. However, right. physically, that is nature saying <clears throat> she's ready to breed. We are the only species on this planet that goes against nature every day in mass. It's just, it's just basically and, like a moral thing. I mean, and it's two a, generations ago, even two thir- generations ago, a 13 year old married? that wasn't married, you might be deemed undesirable. 
This is true. I mean, we've advanced. In you the last already had a homestead. You had land to take care of. You were raising a family. That's just like you know what I'm saying. If you're 15 and you got a 10 year old girlfriend, like people gonna look at you like, what the fuck is wrong with you? But like, but if you're 25 and you got a 20 year old girlfriend, then people gonna be like, oh okay. But there's also like there is a developmental. But I mean, but like there, that, but that age. I mean, but it's like, I'm just saying, yeah. like the age wise is like, oh okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, like well, I'm 38. Haley Fawn's 28. Now, yeah. if I was 28, she's 18. People are gonna be like, bruh. It would, it would be a little. If bit, I'm 18 I mean, yeah. and she's eight, we got issues. Oh yeah, you going to jail? <laughs> there's going to, problem. Yeah, pass and go. You going to? Yeah, you going straight to jail? It, it's a social construct. Uh, so in a sense, like. I think it's in our nature to do that. It to I mean, as much as it may and have it been is, in our nature and it in is the past, for women but, as much as it is for men, which is mm-hmm. why you see all of these goddamn reports about female teachers getting sentenced to fucking prison terms because they were fucking 13, 14, Where 15 years old. Where were those these teachers, teachers when yes. I was in school? Where were they? Cuz all my Cause teachers I could, have I could have kept my mouth shut about it. Yeah, I would have shut the fuck up. They'd have been like, "Hey Bulldog, what are you doing this weekend?" I'll be like, "Nothing." Hanging out at home. See, it almost happened to me, but I was scared and didn't do it. <laughs> I, 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 out. I freaked out. I didn't know. I didn't know exactly what was going on, and I was like, "Uh!" So I bolted. <laughs> it was like the door was locked. I was like jiggling handles. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm, I'm gonna be late to class." I'm like the best student now. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Like, even if that, let's say, a female teacher took advantage of a younger male, let's just frame it in that. Did not take hey, advantage of. Stop for a minute. Let's just frame it the way it is. You have a 13-year-old kid who's clearly not, especially a boy at that age. Y'all ain't the most logical of beasts at that point in time in your I'm life. I'm not logical at 35. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but even as a male where, let's say a grown-up male, where you are, cons- what happens to you is considered rape. If it's fr- not necessarily from a male, but if it's a female that perpetrated that on you, pe- people, the entire society is like, why are you even mad about that? You just have, like, you... It's it's different. Like as a someone who does consider myself a feminist, that's a problem for me as well. The fact that a man can't come forward and be like, "Oh, this bitch used to beat the fire out of me," and as a man, I was trying not to hit her, so I just got my ass whooped. Or you know, this she you know took away my free will and I was forced to do this. Mm-hmm. Then you deserve every bit of empathy and whatever resources are available to you as a rape victim that I do. I re- get really pissed off when Society I Society says otherwise. Right. I get really pissed off when especially men hear this happening to another man and want to be like, well, I don't even know why you're mad about getting laid. You know what? Like that, In that situation, y'all are the problem as the males of the species. There is no sympathy for a guy who got sex, whether it was for or against his own free will, and that's a problem for me. Well, okay, these teachers, they're not raping their students. What is rape, though? Like you're out at the age of consent, so legally, yes, that's rape. I, I, I think the argument. Let's look be... at let's look at rape as consensual and non consensual. Do you? And I'm going to tell you what. I know I didn't at 13 as a female. How I lost it? my virginity at 13. I lost mine at 11. I, I think I think oh capitalism yeah. solves this issue. You look at corporations that say, okay, if you're a manager, you can't be fucking and banging. Even though you guys are both consensual and, and both of age, you can't be banging your employees because there's that power of authority over them. Same thing should apply, I think, with schooling in a sense. That, like, you know, it doesn't matter. I, I'm now, I, I I think the age of consent should be 16, 18. I, I'm not arguing about the I, age of I consent. But I think that the legal aspect should be arguing, okay, so yeah, the kids, the guy or whatever, the boy in school is 16, 17, even 18. But it's his teacher. That's a power of authority. And so to me, I think that should be the legal ramification is, does this person hold a power of authority over you? And even if the guy wanted to and everything else, are there certain circumstances that can raise that where the, maybe the boy says, oh, well, you know, hey, I'm banging you. I want all A's now because... Of the, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that that's against a lot of uh, every corporate policy I've ever seen. Why aren't we applying that in school corporations? You know, that's the way I think it should be angled at. Um, just because of the, the whole age of consent. I think, I mean, obviously guys at the age of 13 and up are like trying to bang everything they can, no matter what Pies, the age it is. Furniture. So Right. Yeah. Inanimate yeah. objects. Yeah. Just period. Yeah. Like, yeah. So <laughs> if it's somewhere. got a hole, if it's got a hole big enough for you to stick your dick yeah. in, you're probably going to try it. Yeah, so, right. so I would say that, Make it you know, 
<laughs> Leave the consent wherever it is, you know, 16, 17, 18, you know, varies per state. I don't think that's the problem is that age limit. I think the problem is the position of authority. And we need to start regulating that, being like, well, if you're a teacher or a principal or something, you have some sort of authority over these people that are mandatory, have to be there. You know, because, for instance, like if the kid's 16, 17, whatever his consent age is for that state and says, you know, oh, yeah, I do want to bang my teacher, then, you know, go to another school or something or whatever. Or maybe not or, just directly <laughs> in that class. Like, if as a 16-year-old, if my 25-year-old boss at my part after time, after work job hits on me or, you know, comes at me like that, it's still, like, the exact same age gap, exact same time, it's it's one versus the other. I've not heard that argument made before, but that probably suits my feelings better than what I've been able to describe. Um, but you do have this where there's no sympathy or empathy for men for any kind of... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, no. And, and it's perpetrated by, by guys. Bullshit. I see yeah. I see what you're saying. Men, guys are like, oh, you're shady, But other <laughs> men don't let y'all have feelings. Like, you can't feel any type of way about anything. Yeah, we're not we're not allowed to be emotional. Like, I, I could get raped, like, at gunpoint by a woman. I, I can't, t- you I can't ain't tell telling nobody. I can't tell nobody about it because, like, man, you could have overpowered her, man. You a little bitch. Yeah. You might just tell everybody that it happened just because it was, like, yeah. Trying to be cool about it. You're like, yeah, I got fucking raped by like, this chick with a gun. It was or I awesome. Or just be like, hey, I had sex with her, but like, I can't say that I cried through the whole fucking thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> then you diminish that term of rape. Like, it just, it's so weird. Like, I I have a lot of friends who consider themselves feminists who are on the same side of the issues I have. I have a real problem with feminists when it's a one-sided, the women just need to benefit from this and get a come up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not here for that. I'm here for society growing and changing. That's what feminism is. And that's my it's whole complete. equality through special or preferential treatment. I fucking can't stand it. Like it's, we, it's, it's a society of equality, you know. With so long as it meets my like, terms. Yeah, like, yeah, we can be equal if, you know. <laughs> yeah. If you can do this, this, that, and this. Yeah. Like, I, say, I think you should get rid of, like, uh, you know, with job employments and scholarships, all the stuff, and it asks you what's your sex, what's your age, what's your race, you know, what's your, you know, disabilities and stuff. Get rid of all that question. Going get completely rid of blind. It. Yeah, just going blind. What was your grades in school? Can you get in? What was your job history and criminal background? You work here. You know, that that's all they need. I, I think you get rid like of this. You show for your interview like um, the voice audition. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, they hit the buzzer, spin the chair around. Yeah, they're like, ah, yeah. oh, you're Too black. Too late now, motherfucker. You picked me. Yeah. So I would have never guessed you were trans. I would have never guessed it. <laughs> Unless you have some sort of like discipline. Like, for instance, if like you're a construction worker working on high beams and... You you're in a have, wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're, you're probably not going to get the job. Hey, no, if you can do that job, that's yeah. fucking yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you deserve a seven-figure yeah. salary. Yeah. We'll <laughs> give you a shot like, at If it. you were able to control yourself on a unicycle down an I-beam, I'm like, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> give a shit about it. Like, hey, like look, Steve, like, look, fuck, let Steve do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Like, shit, he does, <laughs> right. he does amazing work. Uh, let's let him go up there. Watch. Yeah. Yeah. He's already paralyzed. What's the worst thing that can happen? He's going to die, which to me, in my mind, would be better than being paralyzed because I ain't trying to. Like, yeah, yeah. I, back, back to the whole pedophile thing. So here's here's my biggest problem with all of. I just want to make a real the, quick note. We are not comparing being transgender to eugenics, being pedophile. Eugenics fixes it. No, not like, at all. Like that's because this is where the conversation went. If anybody gets confused on that, we are not putting these in the same no, this ballpark. Is just free flowing just, conversation. Just in case anybody wants to be a dick when they're listening to this, I'm well, gonna say it for the record. We are not comparing one to the other. Well, let's go back to the whole, uh, you know, the sex doll thing. It looks like a kid. Right. That's, I think the that's way to I'm... fix this is because I see the argument. The argument is like, say, uh, a person that uh, might be a pedophile. He hasn't committed the crime, or she, whoever. They haven't committed the crime. Um, but they have these desires, and so you're going to give them a substitute for it or whatever. I don't know. Uh, I, I see the I see the argument. I just don't know that's the best way to treat it uh, by on. substituting it. I don't know if that's the best way to treat it. Look at video games. Steven, you and I have admitted to each other on many, many occasions mm-hmm. we would both like to know what the, what the sensation of killing another human being is like. Yeah. However, we're not going to do that unless we're put in a threatened a threatening position yeah. and we have to defend ourselves. Video However, video games gives you that outlet where you just yeah. get to kill people in mass. And if you're playing online mm-hmm. with other people and you got a headset on and you hear someone But that's scream, not a mental God. illness though. That's the thing. You I mean you look at like Jeffrey Dahmer for example. You take him, he was experimenting on animals and artwork and these type of things and it progressed then to become worse because he didn't get the treatment now if you know if we can substitute the but doll again thing, serial, whatever, but serial killers are 
an anomaly. They're a statistic anomaly. Yeah, oh yeah, anomaly. yeah. I'm so, I'm so, I, I mean, pedophiles are. A rob, uh, robot that you could program to, like that you could chase through the woods and axe murder. To just reset her settings, get her a new skin. Talk, Westworld. 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 Yeah, well, Westworld is yeah. perfect. Yeah, perfect. I, because absolutely. these people are not going to do this in yeah. their everyday life, but they get to go Outlet. somewhere yeah. where they can kill, they can rape, they can steal, they can gamble, they can go on fucking adventures. But my thing is, if we're using the dolls as a substitute, it, it shouldn't be just. Oh, here's your sex doll that looks like a 12 year old. See therapy. you later. Bye. I think it should be okay if you want this thing, have it, whatever. But you also have to go and do me these meetings, and you have to be followed sure. up on, and 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 that's what I that's what I was gonna get or to. Or eugenics. Pedi- <laughs> that's how I kind of see it. Like it's- right. pedophilia should be treated more as a mental illness in the regard of but who's gonna come forward and be like, I like kids. To, Don't. Hate but me. And, 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 okay, that's what I'm getting to though. Yeah. Here's the problem. Too many people are automatically like, oh, he just said he has desired, fuck him, blah, blah, blah. blah. Well, of course people aren't going to come forward with this fucking, with, with this illness. Fuck no, they live in fear. Kind of like LGBT people do. They live in fear, right? A lot of them. Like, I just saw not really- so much now, yeah. Yeah. but look at the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Gay people fucking were afraid all the time unless you lived in the it's fucking hate ashbury I just watched this video it was an English gentleman and an English child he was 67 years old this kid was like 13 they were both gay men or a gay child and a gay man and they were talking about their experience and how vastly different it was for the 67 year old he was telling this little boy they lived in the UK at one point I think it was like in the 70s or or 80s that if you stayed with your boyfriend overnight, it was still illegal to be gay. They could knock on your door if they found you in bed together. Both of y'all are going to jail. And this kid mm. just could not wrap his head around and like this concept. And I'm not saying it's even easy for kids to come out today, depending on you know who your parents are, what whatever happens. Where you live but in it the is <laughs> so yeah, wherever you, location. Right. It's so much more support today than there was for these men who. I think if it had always been this accepting of gay culture, that I don't know that we would have even had the AIDS crisis to begin with, where people are hiding and doing this and, you know, obviously not being protected because it's just a couple minutes of sex in a bathroom with an anonymous stranger versus, you know, the education that we have now. I mean, there's an argument to be made there that if we didn't freak out over two men and two women, which... Like, if you take it back to Greek society, we didn't then. Like, nobody cared right. until, like, this well, little look, book was written about Sodom and Gomorrah, and then all of a sudden, we had a problem with people's parts being put, you know, with similar parts, and now... Yeah. Well, look at the priesthood. The Catholic Church covers up more homosexual sex crimes than any other institute But they're agency. also anti-gay, which is fucking right. weird. Right, right. Catholicism has recently, especially with the current Pope that we have, taken this step towards, well, maybe homosexuality isn't a sin and this or that. And if you believe in the Bible and, you know, you follow the word, it clearly says that it is in Leviticus. And but Let these motherfuckers but, have partners. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, how hard is... Like, it's I not have, a difficult concept. I, have an, I get real sensitive. Like, I get real deep in my feelings when I hear this argument. I know that it's true. I know that there are issues with Catholic priests, like rampant issues. My uncle is a Catholic priest. So I get really... it's I get real defensive when you hit this note. Because I... Like, it's... We're not it's, talking about one or two. I know. It's, it's, it's not a statistical of, anomaly. Yeah, it's I know. a huge it's not, control It comes thing. down to the not all men. Hashtag not all men. It's right. like not all Catholic priests. Like, I get yeah. real deep in my feelings. Like, And I have to recognize <clears> that and be like... Okay, this is a sensitive topic for you, baby. Don't go as hard in the paint, you know, because I'm not defending my uncle. My uncle doesn't do this. I don't need to defend him. Right. Um, but I, I do, like, it is, you know, really weird to be a child and have to explain that you have an uncle father because he's a priest. Um, <laughs> but it, I get real sensitive about this issue, and it's something that I have to make, like, I physically have to, like, when it gets brought up, you won't hear me re- argue it real hard up because if I do, I'm going to start to go crazy and it's because of this one situation. So I don't really argue with that. But yes, it is a huge problem. All these boys couldn't come forward because as a man, you know, even if another man has taken advantage of you, then, you know, you can't speak up about it. And then on the opposite side of that, you have, as a male, if you're sodomized and that's your form of rape or whatever happens to you, <clears throat> there's this level of like, here's what happens when a woman gets raped and that's that's bad we all agree that that's bad but if a man gets raped it's gotta be you know there, there's no equality in it at, at all and 
don't people tend to think that as a man the only way you can be raped is to be sodomized no that's not correct no. and as, an, as a woman the only way that you're going to be raped is somebody's going to forcibly stick their penis in your vagina that is not how that works at all so like there's this weird societal like when it comes to rape like oh it's clearly worse if it's done on a, upon a man which it, like it's it's very, it's a very weird hierarchy to me to yeah. like have to accept that, that it's a game of one upsmanship that's yeah. ridiculous like I was raped. Oh well, I'm a male, and I, like I had somebody take advantage. Oh, that sucks for you too. Let's form a group. But they like, look at it like, oh sucks. well, well, it's not supposed to happen to a guy. Like women are like weak, or or that's you know what I'm saying. Like that's how some people view it. Like I'm like, men are supposed to be stronger, so we're not supposed to be able to. Women get the sympathy. Like the we're not empathy, supposed to like whereas, succumb to like yeah. we're not supposed to let you nobody be think, able to fight them off. Yeah, like I shouldn't be able to like have some guys like. Just roll guys upon you, to, six foot tall. Like yeah, you know, two two twenty. I'm supposed to be able to fight off this whole football team, right? Because <laughs> you know what I'm saying? like because I'm a man and like and they wanted to fuck me. I'm supposed to fight them off. When as a woman, like you're supposed to just not be able to handle it. When I was a kid, France came up with this law, and I don't know if it's still on the books that if you're wearing jeans. You could not be raped because no man could get your jeans off of you without your assistance. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> that was, I remember being in high school being like. Hey, look, if a chick's wearing leather pants, I'm going to have questions. <laughs> like, that's the biggest bunch of bullshit. Like, I remember sitting in high school being like, what the hell? And this was long before I hit my feminist stride. This is when I was still living in a home with good Christian values, you know, where women weren't necessarily always considered equal. And I remember at that age being like, that's fucked up. <laughs> like, like, just because I'm wearing jeans, like, have you heard of a scissors? Yeah. Like, <laughs> shit, but, you ripped the motherfuckers and call it a day. Let's, let's get back to this. The, the, the Guys whole pedophile. with a big pies just to fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole pedophile thing, though. This really, like, there needs to be a shift in thinking to where, stand, yeah. to where people feel comfortable seeking help before they act on anything like this. But the problem is... Uh, we're, it's not there. I it's, mean, it's not, and it's, it's, it's and gonna take time. Do you, what? This is gonna take time. I mean, here's the really, thing. Raise your thing. hand in this Pedo- room if you know a chomo. Oh yeah. A what? A child, a child molester. molester. Oh. Okay. Yeah, raise your hand, like every, yeah. all of us, like you do. Um, there's somebody that used to work at the Vapor Bank who is. Oh, chomo. gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah, put okay, your hand okay, in there. Okay, yeah. So yeah, every forgot, there's yeah. four people in this room, and all of us have a one-to-one ratio, at least one-to-one, of somebody who we know that has committed or been accused of committing uh, child molestation. So this is clearly not an aberration in our society. If, you know... Go back to the Greeks. The Greeks had sex with children yeah. all the time. First of all, the, the, the Spartans. The Spart- When you were, what, 13 or 14, you were serving in the Spartan military? Yeah, fucking they were, yeah, they were encouraged to take a partner in their military. And they didn't care, male, but male, your life, male, female, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But if you look back at it, I mean, your life expectancy was like 30. Yes. You know? <laughs> so nowadays, it's because of we learned that, okay, well, the human brain isn't really fully developed until, what, 23, 25, something like that, you know? Yeah, the frontal lobe so, is a bitch. So, so it, as a social contract, you start to say, okay, well, maybe we shouldn't be fucking kids. It's probably bad. Uh, either way, you know. Right. Now, I mean, <laughs> We're not sure yet, but yeah. so, I, I think it just like with uh, homosexuals that, yeah, they, they had a, a point in time where they had to face ridicule and all these other things. And if you think about it from a long stretch game, I mean... Uh, humanity's been around, let's say, over six thousand years, uh, you know, and How just can a, that be a matter. Two thousand seventeen years old. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> happy mean, birthday, Earth. <laughs> humanity, uh, like as as we are, as like the the developed thinking is like a hundred thousand years. Yeah, yeah. Like humans uh, have existed, and, and it, you, well, you see these spikes in intelligence right. and, and these social the ages, yeah. the yeah. ages, industrial revolutions, if you will, like there's the Stone Age, the Bronze boom, Age, boom, boom. you know, Light, man, yeah. That. So I so I look at it the that dark age with the, the child pedophilia thing. You're, there's no way you're going to get rid of the ridicule for it. Uh, and but there's also no way that you're going to get rid of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's going to always be here. Yeah, Flip. kind of like yeah. how LGBT. So I think you just let society deal with it in that current form. LGBT Flip. is now shown that it's genetic. Like yeah. the, being gay or lesbian or whatever, they've shown that it's oh, yeah, genetic. People are definitely Here's born the thing, genetically if you flip predisposed. This pedophilia thing on its head. Somebody commits this act, they go to jail, they do their time, they get out. You have to register as a sex offender. Um, in Florida when I lived there, so this has been before 2006 is when I moved back, there was a case where um, this offender had moved into a neighborhood, was mining, doing everything he was supposed to do, attending a, like 
clearly trying to just live his life to the best of his capabilities. And had served his sentence to society. Yes. And so his neighbors found out. So they got his mugshot, which you are legally allowed to, if there's a sex offender in the area, take their mugshot and post it so people can be aware of the face. However, you are not able to legally alter that mugshot by adding, you know, personal information about the person, their address. So they, this neighbor decided, found out that so-and-so was a pedophile and is living over here, blanketed the entire neighborhood with flyers of this guy's face, his crimes, and his address. This man, who had served his, his, society, his debt to society, and by everything that we could tell, was working on not committing this again and trying to move forward with his life, all of a sudden is now, his home is being attacked by other people. People are throwing bricks through his window, and he puts a gun in his mouth, and he ends his life. At what point is that a waste? Because he did his time. He was doing everything in his power to not repeat again and from what we can tell. The but sometimes you make a dumb mistake you can never come back from. Right. True. So, I mean... Well, on, on that same notion, yeah. here's where the rape thing really gets skewed. Danielle, you sitting in this room right now, all you have to do is point the finger and say the name and that he did it. And we're going to jail. And that... Not necessarily. The court but, of social opinion gonna oh, yeah. you, that you stigma is never going to wash yeah. off you. But Even no, if you're found not guilty, <clears throat> you are a rapist, and everyone that ever knew you. Well, like is, those Duke kids, those, those kids from Duke. Uh, they were, uh, oh, yeah, the yeah. 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 And now, still to this day, a lot of those kids are like yeah. having problems trying to find jobs and stuff because yeah, people are like, can, oh, we remember you, you guys. You can never the beat thing. a rape case. No matter yeah. no matter how great your lawyer, you even if you win, you can't beat a rape case. But a man can't point a finger at a woman and say she did this go into a police station and do that I fucking dare any man on this planet to go into a police station name a name of a female and say that she raped you Caitlyn Jenner ain't nobody (laughs) (laughs) now hey that could legitimately happen because I'm going to tell you right now that's a that's a very disciplined like decathlete she could probably overpower any of us she overpowered me and my daughter has to pay for her education (laughs) so we can settle inside of court I don't know. It, it's so complicated with her. She is just such a piss poor representation of that community, and everybody wants to hold her up. Oh, yeah. I made this point the other day on Facebook. There was like when the SB award happened two years ago, like the, whatever this was, bravery award or whatever. Um, yeah. this courage, whole, it was a court, cur- courage award. There's this whole argument that broke out on Facebook about the soldier that was also nominated who had like all of his limbs blown off and blah 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 blah. Courage. Like, I, I don't understand why we fight about what what's courageous and what is not. Like, if you have depression and you went out and got your own damn groceries, you know, today, and you put on real clothes and you wash your hair, to me, that's courageous. Mm-hmm. If I go to a circus, all y'all know I'm courageous as fuck right now because I there's no way. There's no way that's happening. That's, like, me at my pinnacle of being brave. Like, I can look down in a dark alley and put a bullet between somebody's eyes who has tried to attack me without really flinching. But I ain't walking in that circus voluntarily. Like, you're going to have to drag me in there. There's this whole argument as to what is brave and what is not. And I don't understand why it has to, like, why why we need to classify so much in this world. Like, there's, like, you have to reach a certain classification to be considered, like, it just doesn't make sense. The best definition of courage I've ever heard is courage is not the absence of fear. It's doing what's right even in the presence of fear. Yeah. That's it. But I don't think what, I mean, what, I, I, well, I like to call him Bruce Lynn. Bruce Lynn? <laughs> Bruce Lynn. Bruce Lynn Jenner. <laughs> Damn it. I, that's what I like to call him. But I don't think anything that the motherfucker done has ever been courageous. Like, Yeah, I agree. I mean, Getting I'm, a divorce from Chris Card- Chris Jenner. You get paid. That's, that's, that's brave as fuck. That was crazy. No, because look what the fuck uh, the Kardashians have done to people. They turned Kanye into, a, I don't even know what the fuck he is no more. <laughs> Lamar, He's unrecognizable. Lamar's a crackhead. Bruce is a fucking woman now. Scott's an alcoholic. The dad's dead. Um, <laughs> they turn those motherfuckers crazy. What's his name? Uh, they got OJ off the hook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. OJ back at it again. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, and she was fucking all of them. Who's that Saints football player that Kim used to date? Uh, Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush got a daughter that looks just like North. And when was the last time he done anything relevant? They yeah. ruined people. It's... They fucking ruined people. Like, I just don't see the... Thanks a lot, Ray J. I just don't see the... <laughs> 
I just don't see the bravery for a millionaire that's that, to come out to exactly. a media. Exactly. Who's exactly. there, there for you? You're not even in a yeah. position to face true yeah. social hardships. Yeah. Dude, you're a multi-millionaire. You're so millionaire. privileged yeah. that as a transgender woman, you can be a Trump supporter and people are going to like yeah. not burn you at the stake for that. Because literally, your community should have showed up on your door like, knock, knock, knock. Hi, yes, we have this wonderful cross we've set out on your lawn. Would you like to come meet Jesus? And then now, and like yeah. this, and this motherfucker, like, done all of this shit and was like and now like when he's like fuck you and your people he's like uh Bruce was like me? oh wait a minute I can't no, think for you sir like, that's not right that's not no that's, bl- is- that's blaming the snake for being a snake when it yeah. bites you yeah, I'm like, like that's all that is well, like you just thought you were gonna pick up that uh, fucking cobra right. and pet it right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of retrace back to the Trump thing this whole uh, uh banning transgender from the military thing I think solely he plays 4D chess the dude's like a master at publicity so I, oh, yeah. I think the only reason why he did it is just to make the left have to argue the points that they're against right and, and joining then, the military yeah, in the two, first place you're looking at a lot of states are, are, are uh, electing senators now and now those people because a majority of people uh, in a lot of polls are showing that they're they're, they're for Banning transgender on this kind of mental health issue reason. Yeah, I know, why. I know a lot of uh, men, like military people that are. Uh, yeah, they're, they're like they're, I don't. I fucking hate Trump, but I agree with him on this. And yeah, like, right. yeah. So, oh, even yeah, I've a broke clocks right twice a day. I got <laughs> veteran <laughs> friends that. that well, he's right that, all the that's time where my time on like as far as publicity things. So the, the the thing that I see with this is that, so he's making these Democrats that are running for Senate now have to they have to appeal because they already admitted they. They don't know. They're out of touch with the public. So now they have to try to play two faced with the public and say, "Hey, look," because um, the public stands for what Trump's doing. A lot, majority of them. And so he's saying. So they have to tell these people, "Hey, look, um, yeah, we're, we're not going to fight this thing. We're not going to fight this thing. We're trying to get elected, and then they're going to kill their own base because the left are notorious for cannibalizing themselves. Oh yeah. So, it's so it's they can't. All you got to do is look at the it's 2016 Florida election. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. Trump is not a real conservative. No, uh, no, he's, he's not he's, anti-gay. He's not anti-trans. He's not any of this stuff. He's just pro-Trump. Yeah, he's pro-Trump, yeah. and so and he, he's the master of being able to take whatever would be considered a liability. And he's and a great manipulator. Here's, this is my favorite Trump story that I've ever heard in my life. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, big old nerd, whatever you want to call it. So when Harry Potter was at its peak. Um, Daniel Radcliffe was getting ready to do an interview on the Today Show. Donald Trump was on before him, and they like meet backstage, and they like they introduce themselves. And uh, Dan is just basically like really nervous about going on there. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. And Trump goes, "Well, why don't you just tell him that you met Donald Trump backstage and what a great guy he was?" <laughs> like that is like like every time somebody says Trump, that's exactly everything that Trump is about yeah, to me. That's it's like that's the guy. Like, that's who he is. He cares about I don't himself. Think and... He's not a military strategist. He, he no, couldn't no, no, fight his way out of a plastic had, bag with directions. He had bones for us. That's why he couldn't uh, fight in the like, military. He, Although he played He's sports. not. I wouldn't even call him. He went him, to the military academy. He went to school to the military mm-hmm. academy. I wouldn't even call him incredibly bright as far as like an IQ level goes. I will give it to him, he's however. He's crafty. He is. He. The art of the deal, his book. He, he made himself an expert on one thing and one thing only and has written that to the apparently pinnacle of, I mean, he's, it's, I don't even want to, yeah, he's, a, he's president of the country. Yeah. Like, it's, it makes me hurt inside. But he did this, he put in the work and played a psychological warfare game that unfortunately... Like people didn't realize we were playing psychological warfare when you go into an election, and we all oh, the got Democrats knew that. The Democrats knew it. But uh, but look at how many the general public didn't know it. Like the, the, the general public doesn't the realize fans knew it. We but, knew it. But look look at how many who once upon a time liberals converted and changed to become Republican conservatives for Trump. The entire and, Democratic and Trump, Republican Party oh, comes through. I know a lot places. of Bernie Sander fans that Trump, switched from Bernie to Trump. Just yes. because it, it was, changed. It was, yeah, it was, it was, we were tired of Clintons and Bushes. Trump, literally, all he had to do every time Hillary Clinton said something, he would throw little micro jabs. He basically did political boxing better than anyone we have ever seen. Without addressing in, an issue. Yes, in human history. And instead of taking going for haymaker, haymaker, which is what Hillary was trying to do, Trump is like... He, Trump just goes duck, dodge, jab, duck, dodge, jab, duck, he, dodge, jab, and finally Hillary's face was so goddamn busted up that the entire liberal party was unrecognizable. And he said the shit to like the people that like 
nobody said shit to, which was like mainly like the redneck America. Oh yeah, he said nobody shit. ever catered. He to said shit the to the old boys. Like the, they were like, oh. he doesn't cater to them now. He yeah. caters to rich white males, but mm-hmm. he has made these dumb fucking rednecks think that he is here for them, which yeah, is the it, funniest. Like and, these people are gonna be like, you're not rich enough to be a Republican, honey. Yeah, like look right. at the numbers. But, like he, no, I, like he wouldn't even be in the same fucking. Like stadium with these people, like some of these people, not the same, not unless not the same room. He wouldn't even be the same like fucking stadium. Like yeah, no. I'm not being around these fucking people. Um, not without massive masses. amounts of security. But they, but they love him. They yeah. love the unwashed him. masses. Well, I, I, I think he still caters to him. I mean, he's getting things done that he said he was. He promised to these rednecks. I mean, they, they're getting the wall done. They're, yeah, the wall has like the first they, they chunk started, has been they approved. Doing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he's hard now, my on question him. is, how many Mexicans are they going to hire to actually start? Here's, but no, here's Mexico, my other question: like, made and built What self-respecting do, Mexican do you know that goes over land? Like that's what, like the walls right. go right under, like yeah, right the, under the, 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 the tunnels. tunnels. Yeah, they go and the rest tunnels. of them fly in legally and just don't leave. <laughs> yeah. like, like this that, is the, that, that wall is probably going to stop about two thousand people. Maybe. <laughs> 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 oh, that's a damn big wall. I'm going to turn around and go to my phone. Like basically every every Mexican with a mental disability that's trying to. I don't buy that. I don't buy that because if that's the case, then why not build the wall? Why aren't liberals saying, "Oh yeah, build the wall"? They're scared of the wall because, because they, they don't know get it. Will it. Stop! They know it will stop. They know it will I stop. Build it These, it nobody's stop. fucking flying over and all. No, this they shit go through massive. tunnels. Dude, you know, have you seen the, the tunnel I've, I've seen them. I've seen them, and it's nowhere near as many people just walking across the border. More people walk across the border than there are going through tunnels and over the over with planes. That is that's why the liberals are against the wall. That's why liberals are against the wall. Flying in is statistically incorrect. Most of the people who come here as Mexican immigrants, statistically, and I'll find the articles for you later, and I can even post it on the website, are flying in for a. Oh, I'm here to see my family for. Week and just not kind of like how people no, fly I, to Mexico no, for I, yeah, vacation. I agree, I agree that's with the, this. That's I, the, how most of the majority yes. of the illegals are getting here. They're, they're not. outstaying their visas and stuff. I'm talking about what what really needs to stop, though, because the visa thing is pretty easy to track these people down and send them back. That's I mean, a lot of this uh, immigration that we're sending back is because the visas and stuff. It's not like we're stopping them at the uh, at the thing. But if you look at the illegal immigration that is crossing the border, that happens more so than it is these people flying on visas and then getting sent back. Because once they're already yeah. in, it's hard to find that. these people. They don't have visas. They don't have these. Type of, they don't have documentation. When they're flying over, they at least have documentation. We just never enforced it. Now the Trump administration is enforcing these immigration laws, sending these people back. But you still have the influx of undocumented immigrants coming in, and you can't stop that. So to stop that, the wall, will, the wall will do it. I actually, when I lived in Florida, lived with a uh, illegal Mexican immigrant gay man. <laughs> a was, unicorn. It was yeah. a unicorn, <laughs> and he was married. At the time to get try to get legalized, and apparently the wife did not realize that this was just a like a uh, immigration wedding. She but she was sleeping on the couch when him and his lover went in the bedroom. But they were supposedly cousins. This I literally like come <laughs> home every day, and I'm like just get my popcorn out because shit just kept going down. Like they would get into like boxing matches oh, with each other. I'm like. Why is, like, how does this bitch manage to stay so damn dumb? I was like, he probably hit her in the head one too many times. That's the only thing I could come up with. Like, literally, like, it's me coming home from work every night and being like, this is a bowl of popcorn in my living room. I don't watch, I don't think I watched TV for that entire year I lived there. <laughs> I, I just thought, it, it kind of funny, for example, like, uh, I had a lot of people, like, a lot of friends that were Bernie fans, and then they jumped the, the Trump fans. But, however, I, I was very hardcore against Bernie. I'd rather have voted for, uh, uh, Clinton over Bernie, you know, uh, just because of the 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 tax plans. I mean, uh, that alone. I mean, that's the reason why I voted for Trump. I mean, the tax plans alone. I'm gonna save so much more money with Trump. Uh, pl- plus some of the other things like uh, the immigration stuff and some of the other stuff. But let's just pretend that the left was uh, right about the whole poll the numbers. Left was right. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just pretend like, oh, no. the left was right about the issues and that Trump was not gonna be a contender. And it was going to be, I don't know, Marco Rubio or somebody like that. Uh, and it was Bernie Sanders or something like that. You know, that would automatically have to force me. Whereas, like, Clinton would have been a closer thing. Because Clinton, you were getting the same old bullshit. And that I was fine was... with the same old murders bullshit. Murders and lies. Yeah, murders and lies. <laughs> the government, big business, or big government. So I'd rather have, the, you know, the Trump over the Clinton. Because I just wanted to throw a wrench in everything. Plus, also, to me, at least he's fulfilling these promises that, that were 
important to me on an individual basis. I don't give a fuck about everybody else. For me, it's... Am I going <laughs> to save so taxes, real. you know? That is yeah, real. It's real. Uh, uh, it's one nice one. to hear yeah. someone actually fucking say it yeah. instead I mean, of like, I, I well, all con- of us collect it. Fuck you. You don't I pay do my have, bills. I fuck do have you. a societal concern. Like, I do genuinely care about society. But if it comes down to it, it's going to be me. Every yeah, if it's you time. or me, it's me. Yeah. Every like, for example, let's say healthcare, for example. Like, it's a it's a privilege, not a right. However, with us being one of the most richest, powerful countries on the planet, I do think that we should provide some sort of... A single-payer system. A single-payer system where it comes out out of the end of the year, out of your taxes. Or like you've said before, and you are con- very fiscally conservative, exactly. but you lean left... <laughs> it's like, you, hang on. you are more just, left-centrist yeah. when it comes to yeah. personal but, See, my argument issues. against Bernie like with the free college shit is that College doesn't work anymore. No. It doesn't work. So no. why are we going to give you're it away already, for free? We're when paying. you're in college, yeah. studying for your field, you are already at least four if Bernie to came six out and years said, behind. If Bernie oh, came out and said, I'm going to pay for all the mechanics tools. Okay. That's, you know. I, I'm here for that. Yeah. You know, technical schools. If you want to go to a technical trade. school. Trade. Trade yes. schools. I'll pay for that. I'll pay for that. As a taxpayer, I'll, I'll pay 30 cents or whatever the fuck Going to is. school for a yeah. liberal arts yeah. degree? Go fuck yourself. Now, if you start getting into being <laughs> trade school, being paid for, and what have you, and whatnot, then we circle back around to what happened with the black family. Like, it all works together. Back in the 60s and 70s, these uh, trade yeah. schools were included. Like, like it all, like, it kind of all runs yeah, together. Yeah, high school you know, helped you get there. Yeah, but, like, you, know, you would take you these had... classes in high school, and all of a sudden, based on what was happening in the black community, these successful black men who were supporting their community on their backs, who were taking care of their families, all of a sudden, that became a threat, and now we needed all to convert to a four-year college system that they could not afford or right. contribute to. Right. So if you want to, like, this all, like... If people don't know and they don't pay attention, I guess this is quote unquote woke. Because reading do. history books it is hurts. hard. Um, I don't. I hate history. I hate reading I it. But here's history. the thing: if I like to argue, and if I don't know history, I'm gonna get my ass handed to me every single time, and I'm not here for that. Yeah. I'm here to win. Because uh, history. Here to your ass into a, a and see, that's where people like me and Stephen come in, where we have researched history probably too much, yeah. where we can point out yeah. like history to me is how the majority of society treats fucking religion. Yeah. If people treated history and science like religion instead of religion, our world would be a hell of a lot better off. Because people, oh my God, they will base their religion whole life around a fucking the religious lie. Religion is stumbling block for progress. Period, yeah. point blank. As a society, we cannot move forward until this piece of religion is no longer ma- like mattering like okay so we're moving forward and accepting gay rights so we're slowly starting to accept that we don't give a fuck about Leviticus and it's shrimp or any of that shit <laughs> so <laughs> like as as we move forward like the next big stumbling block that we're still fighting that we shouldn't even be a battle anymore is stem cells where does life begin and the fucking book says it itself it says the breath of life every goddamn time so to me that's when you're born and now I'm like your body your choice I am a huge supporter of women's rights. You can have an abortion if you want to. I don't care what the reason is. Health or, oh, you fucked up, or this is your 16th. Um, it's, not a, it's not a choice that I'm making for myself. It wouldn't be a choice that I would make for myself. But just because my, my belief, this is it big. I want everybody to hear this. Your beliefs do not dictate my behavior. And that's, that's For those the thing. of you in that's the back, the, that's the problem. Yeah. let me say it again. Your beliefs do not dictate my behavior. And stop, stop it. Like, just quit. It's never going to work. It's like we're going to continue evolving, and we're slowly going to dismantle this book piece by piece by piece until it doesn't. No, can, the argument goes never, though, unless my wallet dismantle. is involved in it, then my beliefs have everything to do with your rights. If my wallet is involved for it, like for well, instance. Yeah, okay, so I was just going to make the point yeah. of, I think that if you have a single mother who is on welfare, she's collecting government assistance, and she gets pregnant, that should be a mandatory abortion. Or who's if she decides she wants to, abortions, yeah. though. that's the problem. I don't think hold it should on, be mandatory. Hold on. We can do the three or four hundred dollars and get that out of the way, or society can continue to pay for years for this child's insurance, food, or we can just do none of it. Let but, them pay for it. Let but them the have thing the is, child. Like, but that's what I'm saying. If this is someone though. who's on government assistance. But, what, but the thing is, like, say, but when you like do for something like that, like, why is she? Like a single pain. Yeah, that's that's that's, 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 that that's, that's, that's when you run into like say like she might have something like something might be wrong, or she can't like you know, or the spouse died. Yeah, spouse died. or she can't like get back and forth to work. She has no. And again, this is like this is like I said before. Everything needs to be looked at as an individual case. However, let's face facts. 
It's impossible. Most that. people who are on government assistance are able. I worked for the FSSA. I was an eligibility specialist for social services. Yeah. And okay. Now you piss test people who are in the system. As yes, well. and now I work for a company that's contracted to administer drug tests for department for yeah the Department of Child Services. So, working at the FSSA, I can tell you right now, the majority of people who are on government assistance are able-bodied. No, they yeah, can I, I work. Completely agree. And they don't. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can, I completely agree. It's also 100%. not supposed to be permanent. Like if you find yourself, exactly. no, yeah, it was never I have a, permanent a friend of mine. The, the the term for our welfare here is TANF, temporary assistance for needy families, and that temporary bleeds into years. But like, it, but it turned it turned into a problem. Well, I just I, I can just speak for like you know, for the black community. Like it, it turned into y'all. a problem because like it took the man out of the home. You know what I'm saying? Like for. Black like families black to qualify yeah. for TANF, yeah, like, there couldn't be a working yeah, black man in the home. You, you, you can't, like, and, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, it took the man out of the home. You know what I'm saying? Like, so a lot of these child, are, I mean, children are growing up without the father around. You know what I'm saying? Like, so which or, contributes continually and perpetually to the exact same place that we're already in. So it's it's like a fucking vicious cycle because like if you know what I'm saying like if my parents or well, my mom was you know brought up like that, I don't have no other way to know how to live outside of this. That's how I'm going to live. And I think, but there's a particular party that that perpetrates this, and that's the Democratic Party. This is true. They perpetrate keeping minorities poor and keeping them on welfare and keeping them on governor assistance with the parents that yeah. they actually that they're, they're helping. That's why yeah. that's that's why that Detroit's in shambles, Chicago's in shambles, every Democratic ran city uh, is in shambles except for L.A., uh, which is well not, because it's, broke. So- <laughs> it's eating its own babies yeah. Yeah. at this point yeah. in time. So, that, I mean, you look back at the civil rights issue. I mean, the thing, you had a lot of people in the black community that did not want to become Democrats because they're leaving the party that freed them. The Republican Party freed them. And they felt like they're betraying the Republican Party. However, because times were tough, they thought, okay, well, the government, the Democrats are giving out free money. So let's not get married. Let's go our separate ways, do whatever the case may be to get this money because they thought the, long, the short term paid off more than the long term goal. Yeah. But if you look, I mean, you look at, like, I always kind of say, like, kind of quote Donald Trump, he always says, you never see a skinny person drinking Diet Coke. Uh, you, you never see you never see a poor black Republican. Yeah. yeah I mean. No, sure. uh, yeah, yeah, you say. can't even throw I was trying to think, like, I know, some, I know some Republicans, but they the all The Roseanne are, show flat out said. They're well off. We're, yeah. We won the lottery. We're, we're rich enough not to be yeah. Democrats anymore. We get a choice. Like, <laughs> but, then, yeah. but, like, all, but all the black people I know that are Republicans are. Unicorns, they Dick, the dicks, basically. Yeah. I mean, they're, oh, yeah. they're, they're well, all. I dicks. think you have to be. Well, yeah. and and the majority of I them mean, are probably <laughs> from a previous generation. But see, but at the same time, like the, you know, the Republicans that you know freed the slaves, like you know, like you know, then you had that, the you, but you had that, yeah, you had that, same, had that shift, you had that shift, in like, like the 1890s. But the Democrats were, has never, but the Democrats haven't shift. They're the same Ku Klux Klan members that are still that are now giving out money to black people because they know they can keep them down that way. Yeah, um, it's, it's why I don't. It's yeah. why I, don't, I like you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, but this is why I don't fuck with like politics because it's like it's all a game. Oh, like, it is. To keep people, yeah. The same as religion. Yeah, how we yeah, it's, how it's we all, talk about it's all a fucking game. To, just to shit and, on but people. I'll fight I, for I certain broke sides. It. I'll fight. Like I've been fighting yep. lately for Christians, just because I think Islam is probably the biggest threat the world has ever seen. Yes, and I the think that's threat. the complete opposite. Because like I think religion is the biggest the, like religion seen. because like people have a belief. But like, there's a difference between Christians just not liking you and calling you fag or God hates you and these things compared to people throwing you off buildings and beheading you because you left the religion not, or your gang. I mean, it's, it's historically, but hold on, Christianity Chris, has shed at some certain points just a fuck ton of more, blood. They did. more people and then have died in the name of yeah. progressed at least to it where it become more civilized. Yes. More people have died in the whereas name of Jesus Islam. It went backwards. <laughs> it went backwards. Islam, Islam, if you look at pictures from Iran, Iran from the 70s, the men and women look like American men and women. They're yeah. wearing disco clothes. The women are beautiful. Hair and they showing, re, they regressed. They, but, they fucking went backwards. The thing, like, I think like the way that we, like Americans, like where they view Islam or Muslims, it's like it's all based off the media because if you go over there and like they're gonna look at us the same way we look at them, like they're gonna look at us like we. But 
opposite sides of the chessboard there, is where we've been set up to yeah. be on. I, and that's how this game is keep getting played. If you keep making enemies out of people, you never have to have them in the same room and work out their issues. I have no oh, problems yeah. with Muslims. I have problems with Islam. And the problem is, is that the left assumes that if you're just like the whole victim thing that we were talking about, that you can't, you know, uh, yeah, sure, the guy's guilty for stabbing the transgender person a hundred and some odd times, but you can't talk about anything else because otherwise you're pro, you're against the victim. Don't Same thing with Islam. You can't up. talk about Muslims uh, or you can't talk about Islam because then you're like, all of a sudden you're criticizing Muslim. I'm not criticizing Muslim. I'm criticizing the religion. And this, the religion. What's in your text. Yeah. This is a fact. Yeah. In society across the board, your majority of people, your peaceful majority, make no bit of difference when you have a 1-2% to 2 violent, um, what's the word I'm looking, not terrorist, but, um... But 40% of Muslims, it's not 2%, like, it's 40% of Muslims believe you should be killed for leaving the religion. 40%. But you ask a Christian, I'd be I'd be tough to say that there's point zero 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 one percent that say that you should be murdered for being a homosexual. But but these are the same people like the like as far as Christians go, like these are the same people like you know the Ku Klux Klan is is a Christian organization. They will tell you all day every day. I'm, Absolutely, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But like they haven't killed as many people. Well, ISIS hasn't killed nearly as many people as the Klan. Oh, yeah, ISIS has killed more. You're no. right. ISIS, ISIS has killed actually more. killed no. more. Like his, no, like, no, it's like the Ku Klux Klan over time. Like they've killed a lot of fucking they're not, people. ISIS they're is not a new the label millions. for it, but in the name of jihad, more people have been killed and wiped off this planet. But, in the name of jihad, we don't have to be Islam. It doesn't have to be. It is this solely thing. Islam, though. I mean, that's I the mean, thing. jihad does not necessarily mean like a holy war. Like I'm going out to kill people. That's not. That's not what the actual term. I mean, that's what it can be used for. But it's not that the actual term doesn't mean like we're gonna go out and just mm -hmm. kill people in the name of Allah. That's it's just means to be righteous in the name of Allah. It doesn't mean that we're gonna kill you. Now well, it can it, happen. It depends but, on the interpretation. I yeah, mean, the, the book know, was never clear on it. The book right. was never clear. And I mean, Muhammad used it as a form of murdering people. So that of course that's where they're coming from. The, the statistics still are that as I live in the middle of Indiana, I still have a greater chance of being killed by a shark this year than being a victim of Islamic terrorism. That's still the numbers. Now, if that happens, so, I, to mean, no, I, I totally agree with you. The shark NATO happens. Yeah, I'll say that's I'm not saying I'm not saying I see a Muslim down the street and I'm going to say something to him about being a Muslim. No, not at all. Matter of fact, I actually I you know I hope that the Muslims that do come over here legally embrace Western culture and, mo and most of them do I, there's no issue about it yeah I've but got you a few see friends what's that are Muslim and several. they're but if you see what's happening awesome. to Europe it's being destroyed it's being destroyed there's places in Europe you can't even walk down anymore uh, you know these no go zones you can't go there yeah. anymore without without be, like just recently what was it a girl that was uh, raped by an immigrant on her way running and flagging down a car because she was just raped got raped by that driver yeah, yes. raped a 15 year old girl yeah. by immigrants these are immigrants that were doing like, these things and to them, like, and they get off the hook. They get off the hook. Now you can even criticize them. If you live in Europe, you can't criticize these people on, uh, on uh, well, Twitter that was one or of the Facebook. Big, that was one else. of the big yeah. things for yeah. Brexit was they wanted, the, like, one of the huge things was they wanted yeah. to close the borders. They don't want Muslims entering into Britain yeah. anymore. And then, you know, at first... Syria is not sending their brightest and most productive people. No, <laughs> no, yeah. no it's the same... They're bombing them out in Aleppo. It's the same like, thing as what happened when... There was that big boom in the 80s and 90s of Mexico releasing their most violent prisoners and sending them across the border here. We were supposed to embrace it as a cultural enlightenment when they're sending the dregs of their yeah. fucking society that they don't want. And people want to give Trump shit for saying they're sending their murderers, they're sending their rapists. He was ac he's accurate. And, that, and now accurate. he's poking MS-13, which yeah, I just which, can't wait. That's, that's the fucking dumbest D shit. Yeah, no. By far, to me, that's will, the dumbest shit he's done. You know done. why they not can if they uncuff. Cool. Not if they uncuff our immigration forces. You know why they can poke at MS-13? Because the United States government, it's the, the DEA, the FBI, they are the in league. Supporters. No, it, MS-13 is nothing compared to the cartel that the DEA and the FBI have aligned oh, yeah. themselves with. Yeah. Why do you think that whole Eric Holder thing with fast operation, fast, fast and, and, furious. and furious, where it was found... What was it? Five hundred million dollars worth of military hardware and surplus was given to the Mexican cartel. They yeah. picked a side, and then all of a sudden, duffel bags full of heads start showing up along the U.S. border. A lot of people think that that was a symbol, like a symbol of "oh fuck, they're threatening us." That was to pay homage. That was a thank you. That was 
hey, look, here's what we're doing. And we did the same we're thing wiping these motherfuckers out. Yeah, gave, that's, them the, gave them the, all the tools yeah. that they needed to turn around and throw it back in our face. Yeah, true. I mean, we did the same thing with Syria. Russia, we yeah, gave Russia. same thing with Iraq. Same yeah. thing with fucking Bin Laden <laughs> and and Al Qaeda. We, we trained yeah. them. The CIA fucking yeah. trained and them. And they did the same thing with ISIS. Now, see, one thing with so MS-13 keep... is like these guys don't, don't give, give a, a flying fuck. fuck about they don't care about their anything. own well-being. They, they don't, don't care. They don't, about... They don't care about being deported. They don't... Like, all that shit's irrelevant to them. Like, they don't give a they're fuck. They're so beat down as human beings that the sanctity of their own life doesn't well, mean Well, they're shit. also not the ones coming over and staying in the U.S. No, they, they're, they're they going actually, back to Mexico. But no, no, because yeah. uh, they're from El Salvador. Yeah. They, yeah. 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 A lot of them get deported a lot, yeah. but they but they end up back here. They just but, you get know back on the plane. Yeah. But, like, you got to think about, like, some of these dudes, like... I mean, like, they don't care who they kill. And, like, what I'm saying, like, when you're sending cops after these guys... They don't, like... They literally just... It's like death, like murder to them is just. That's like I was having drinking a coke. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's. I'll, I'll, what happens is they get sent to jail. They're just hanging out with their homies. Yeah, like, and like have, yeah. Have you seen the prison, the main prison in El Salvador? It's yeah, all MS thirteen. They literally they run it. the they prisoners run it. Run it. it. Yeah. The guards will not enter. They do after, something similar in Brazil too. They just they just throw these guys in cages, lock the doors, and whatever happens. But the inside thing is, happens inside. the 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 MS thirteen down in in El Salvador. Mm-hmm. The walls are literally low enough that the prisoners climb up and sit on top of the walls, have conversations with their friends and family. Yeah, it's it's no it's nothing to and then it's like it's it's thousands. Of, it's they like pull. at least ten to fifteen thousand of them here. Yeah, that yep. we know about. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? these guys. I mean, like they they're all over the country. They don't yeah. care. They're they're sleeper cells, just like any other terrorist organization like, has been proven like and they are also like we hear about all like these uh, aberrations what we think is aberrations of these seemingly normal white females getting sucked in by ISIS which like you, uh, to me I'm like what the blue fuck you're gonna tell me what I'm gonna wear what I'm gonna eat what I'm gonna do it, da, 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 da. that's not gonna work for me it's not at all like I'm not here like I'm here to do my do me well they romanticize it that's the thing yeah they, they like it. yeah, yeah. There's nothing romantic about being told what to do. <laughs> well, no, but the the, the left well, romanticizes. Know, shit, I mean, some people are here for that. I'm not. Yeah, like, that's not. Or the left tries to spin everything that bad, everything that's bad that's happening with Islam. The left tries to say, well, you know, that's their culture. That's, that's their, their culture. customs. Yeah. yeah. Blah, and then blah. these white girls are like, oh well, shit. You know, I want to become cultured. And they go over there thinking, yeah, sure, you have the red but it's not because they hate women. It's because they're cultured. And it's like, no, they hate women. They hate women. (laughs) The only story that needs to be told over and over and over. Do you remember here a couple years ago, the woman who was like 21, 22, and she went to the Middle East. She go to Afghanistan? Yeah. And she was going to hitchhike across Uh, Afghanistan to prove that that Islam was a religion of peace. (laughs) And she made it all of a day, and she was found raped and beheaded. Yeah, because good if, job. It's just like it's it's if, if you're not, you know, meeting the cultural standard, like just like we talked before, like if I go over there and like and if you're a woman, if you're not covered, then they're gonna be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because yeah, that's you're not you're in our, our land. Now, you're not meeting our standards. Just like here, like if you go to a beach and you see a woman in the fucking in a sweatsuit, you like you like what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like what? Yeah. You're supposed to be wearing a bathing suit. Like what? I mean, we're not gonna cut your head off here for it, but we're just gonna look at you like what the fuck are you doing? Now I mean, they do it, have like like hijab swimsuits. I've seen that now. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's so weird. They they have that, but I mean, it also kind of like standards are always changing. Up until the 1950s, men weren't shirtless at the beach either. They were, you know, everybody was everybody was wearing a cover up. This is yeah, this, men this, wore this, one piece. This shirtless thing suit. is like fairly, a singlet. rompers, like yeah, like <laughs> yeah, a wrestling rompers. singlet. Uh, uh, the, the the topless thing for men, as far as like the the length of society, is fairly new to us. And you have women who are, you know, arguing free of the nipple, and I really honestly don't have an opinion on that. Like, here's what could happen. He, this man is dressed right now. The second y'all leave here, <laughs> I'm this in my is going to be gone. Yeah. Like, his clothes are going to magically disappear, and it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. he's going to be in his underwear. That's true. And if I were to, like, I, I dress in the way I dress in this apartment because it's fucking cold. Um, but if I were to walk out of my room and just, like, fuck, you're going to wear your underwear. That's all I'm going to wear. He'd be like, your boobs are out. He would be curious for about three minutes, and then we go to normally existing, yeah. like we had in this apartment. And he'd just be yeah. like, "Well, she's just not wearing shirts yeah. now. Like that's that's just that's what she's life. decided to do." Well, yeah, and, uh, I mean, with women, I don't know. Women can do that. Y'all can walk around like topless around see, each other and shit. Just, the you left, know, oh girl, you, you have nice breasts, and I can't like bulldog it. Hey man, your balls look nice enough. You can't do that. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't do this shit. See, but the left are the ones crying about this whole free the nipple thing. But then they're okay with the Muslims making people wear bed sheets 24 hours. You know? Bed like, sheets. That's what Look they're at doing. Like E.T. walking around. They're like, yeah, free the nipple, free the nipple. But that's cool that they make these people wear bed sheets against their will. That's Bar- cool because it's part of their culture. Or maybe it's part of our culture just for women to cover their nipples. But at the same I mean, time, like, I don't know any nipple. guy that would be against it. Nope. <laughs> but, but I'm all for it. This, this is the thing I, I think I, that women uh, should walk around topless but the, all day. The, the next problem and it already is you already have it you there's just, these feminists doing the free nipple thing and then they get mad for you looking yeah. but I don't yeah. understand like <laughs> how how we like you know how we de- like a lot of people demonize the hijab but then at the same time nuns have to wear like well I think they're, they're stupid you know, too but they don't yeah. force it they, they volunteer it's yeah, not like the, the Catholic church not a, um, but I'm just saying but like I mean but like yeah. they wear it too I mean like it's, it's, like also, a, yeah, it's a religious thing, thing. Yeah. there's also different kinds you have to think that there's the Francis- Franciscan order there's a bunch of different orders when it comes to the Catholic religion and some are way super extreme. Like I can't remember what order it was. They mentioned it in um, Dave Brown's book. What I, I da- Dan Brown's Dan Brown. Um, mm-hmm. the, the first one he released, the one with the like Da Vinci Code. That's yeah. the one. And like, there's some super extreme religious mm-hmm. like, you know, versions. Of our, like even Christianity. Like the other day, I got confused as hell. I pull into the parking lot at work, and there's a Mennonite. Uh, with uh, talking to a lady that um, works with us that's Amish driving a minivan I had no idea what the fuck was happening the Mennonites can drive I, it was super confusing though because like here and like Amish people Amish people can yeah. ride in a truck they're, they can ride they, can the they cannot operate that I, I like sometimes stuff happens and it's so against the norm like I literally have to be like am I seeing this right but nobody's and, killing Catholic nuns because they're not Hey, well, you know what? Thing, you know yeah. what? You want to talk about it? There's the most peaceful religion, two peaceful religions that have ever existed: Amish and Mennonite. Because yeah. as far as I know, none of those motherfuckers have ever gone on an extermination run of anybody. Mm-hmm. Not that long ago, there was the guy who showed up at the Amish school and gunned down an entire class. Yeah, but full he wasn't Amish. Yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it, it doesn't. Being out of society doesn't necessarily preclude you from being, you know, victims of that. Subject violence. to it. Subject yeah. to it. Yeah. So I mean, you can live separate all you want, but it doesn't necessarily mean society's not going to come knock on your door one day and fuck your life up. Yeah. Um, I mean, Amish people have there, there's there's a good and bad in that also. We have a fairly large Amish population in this area. For if you consider just a little slightly northeast, yeah, just yeah, a little around bit northeast. Washington, Brown they County. make real good food. However, what happens? What I, I have personally known people who've had like Amish nannies and uh, Amish cooks that come into their home and do this but what happens is these uh, they have their own faults as well like it, they sell a lot of stuff the Amish people do they sell everything they make that's how they they survive um, but what happens is they'll come into your home and use like they're supposed to be cooking for your family but they will take like the cooking ingredients like your butter your whatever make whatever they're making out of that it, like and sell it with, without even having to ask you like okay so I'm here to cook for you but I'm also going to make all these baked goods and sell this shit over here so that, they do their own sketchy shit like Amish nannies are real fucked up too because that's not a good situation to be in like it's it's super weird like I, I don't know that if I ever have children um, which are pretty much good to go on that, but I definitely wouldn't have an Amish nanny for them or an Amish cook at my house. They can come and drop off my food, though. Just all that fried chicken. <laughs> How the hell are they going to drop it off? You got to my horse think, in your driveway. A horse and carriage <laughs> in one of these parking spots without no problem. I'll even give you one of the handicapped ones. Just for you. We'll put up an Amish sign over we'll the... We'll put up a sign with an orange triangle on <laughs> with it. With a horse yeah. in yeah, the carriage. With a horse parking only. <laughs> Buggy <laughs> parking only. So what, the traffic jam? I don't even go out there and sweep up the poop if it's in the way. Like, that, like that's some good cooking. Jesus. That would be the downside of being Amish, in my opinion. Is <laughs> you're riding, in, you're riding in that buggy, and not even shit, but the horse farts, uh, yeah. and you're just immediately <laughs> downwind of it. Like there's no windshield; it's hitting you in the face. Yeah, <laughs> you it's, wouldn't be able to take it because you'd be like, "There's no AC in this bitch. I'm out." Oh yeah, no. it's 67 yeah. degrees, and I can't have it down to 42. Mm-mm. I can't live this life. No, yeah. you can't reach over 30 miles an hour or whatever the fuck. There's right. there's he, no he, deity he, in the world worth this. Yeah. <laughs> he'd be like, "It's too hot." This is obviously Satan's playground. I'm out of here. Right. Imagine, <laughs> imagine that police chase. <laughs> OJ and his Bronco wouldn't have shit. Four Bronco. He's like literally a Bronco. Literally. <laughs> Bronco. Jeez. One Bronco. horsepower. Hey, you know, OJ's getting out, but like they're bringing the Bronco back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Iron. perfect time. He should be their spokesperson. That would, oh, man, that would, it's a it's a natural marriage. That would be like a, 
Like he, um, there was all these reports in the news where he almost lost his right to parole because he kept getting caught masturbating. Like he just needs to come out with his own Fifi line and but, just sell that. I think it's like, what do you, what? Do, I mean, what else do you have to do? If like, I'm locked you, in a room all day, what do you, what do you think I'm gonna do? What? <laughs> like I'm. Not, There's only one thing in this world that brings you happiness. And, yeah. I'm like, probably gonna be doing art projects on the wall <laughs> with it at some point. Like, He's been in there nine years. But, I'm gonna have masterpieces that would rival Van Gogh. <laughs> But eventually, like, you run out of space, and then you're like, all right. Um, yes, no. Van Gogh. <laughs> you're welcome. All right, guys. We have hit almost two and a half hours on oh, yeah. this. Well, uh, it's been a great, We could great... be in here all day just yes. going at each other. Yes, no joke. So I want to thank you guys, Quan, Danielle, Stephen. Thank you for coming in. Yep, yep, thank you. Uh, to everybody listening, follow me on Twitter, at B-Dog Unchained. Uh, you can get on Facebook, look up Bulldog Unchained Podcast, follow the page there. Again, it's available on Podbean, it's available on iTunes, it's available on YouTube and Stitcher. And also, if you go, if you want to support the show, even just donating five bucks a month, go to patreon.com, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, forward slash Bulldog Unchained. Again, guys, thank you for coming in. Also, just push that play button so he can get a listen. You know how to yeah. actually listen to yeah. two and a half hours worth of our shit. Dude, two, just plus play. Two things, two things. Share it. Re- retweet it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, open it up, click play, Give listen for 10, 10 seconds. seconds, and then close it. Man, put the shit on MySpace if you get it. <laughs> put it like you can be my top eight. Like, right? literally, but let, bother Tom's to, ass. You don't even have to get to the point where we're talking. Like, there's a like song intro. If you don't want to hear our voices, because I understand. I, I couldn't stand to listen to my voice, but if you don't want to hear us talk, just wait. Get through the intro, cut that shit off, and be out. Just give us a listen. All right, so uh, next week I think I'm going to be having uh, Dirt Nap Dave and Nubsy slow back again. But then the following weekend, I have set up, um, I will be having one of the two trans people on the show. And I think, Danielle, you're going to join us again. I'll be back. For that. Yeah. So uh, that'll be an interesting follow up for this. Shall be. Again, thank you guys for coming in. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Share it, support it. Follow it. Love it, hate it. Yeah, right. right. I'll even take an angry face reaction, whatever. (laughs) All right, I am the king of villains, Bulldog Malenko. This has been the Bulldog Untamed Podcast. Take care.